Will the meeting please come to order? Will all members of the council, as well as the public, please rise for the invocation and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. The invocation this evening will be offered by Chaplain DJ Shoulders, the Metropolitan Police Department, uh, of the Metropolitan Police Department. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Mayor Briley. Before I pray last Thursday morning, Metro Nashville Police Department and the City of Nashville lost a wonderful 18-year veteran, Officer Eric Mumal, lost his life while trying to save another. The City of Nashville and the response has been quite overwhelming. Eric had received several awards for his heroism and many other acts of service, some of which uh, many of us and uh, didn't know about to some I heard some of it yesterday at the service, whether it was acts of kindness with children or with families or behind the scenes stuff. Eric had a big smile, loved his job, loved serving others. He came to Nashville from Ohio uh, 18 years ago and served well and served Madison well and Nashville well. So our prayer is also with his family as they pay the final respects near Columbus, Ohio later this week. So join me before I pray in a moment of silence and honor to Officer Eric Mumal. Thank you, and now for the prayer. Almighty God, first of all, we thank you tonight for the wonderful gift of life that each of us standing here today have at this moment. Life is but a vapor. So Lord, as your word says, teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. We're asking tonight, God, for wisdom and strength and knowledge in this particular meeting and in the meetings of it. I'm asking for wisdom for our mayor, Mayor Barry, Vice Mayor Briley, and the councilmen and women that faithfully serve our city and serve it well. I ask, Lord, that you bless our great city as it experiences unprecedented growth at this time, and may we treat one another with respect and dignity and honor as we seek to make things better for everybody involved. Protect the many men and women that protect us daily and keep your hand upon them and their precious families. I'm asking, Lord, that you lead and guide us, and may we do as the Scripture says, in all of our ways acknowledge you, and you shall direct our paths. Thank you for bringing us here tonight. Give this meeting strength and wisdom, honor tonight, and for all these things we ask in your precious name, the name of Jesus. Amen. Councilman, Councilman Pardue, if you would lead us in the pledge. Councilman Pridemore. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. If you would, I'd like to have a moment of uh, personal privilege to address the council. The floor is yours. Thank you. I would just like to, uh, as continue on with uh, Pastor Shoulders, I would just like to, to make this statement from council members and to the, to the people of Nashville uh, expressing our love and our condolences to the, to the family to the brother officers who I am one, and Councilman Pardue, another one, and to all in law enforcement and to all that have, that feel the love and, and, and uh, grace uh, for Officer Mumau. So I wanna thank you, Vice Mayor, for allowing us to do that, and I also wanna thank Councilman Elrod for suggesting and yielding his time to allow uh, Chaplain Shoulders an opportunity for prayer. Last Thursday morning was a tragic, tragic event that occurred in the Madison Neely's Bend area of Davidson County. It occurred in our, we are all one. Metro police officer Mumau gave, gave his life attempting to save the life of an everyday average citizen. Two other officers, Nick Diamond and Trent, Trent Craig were also injured and only by the grace of God are they alive today. And we thank the Lord for that. The entire city cried and mourned for these officers. 
all three of them are off are heroes and all the officers that were out there that that early dark early morning yesterday standing in the pouring rain members of the neely's bend madison and nashville communities stood in honor of officer Mumau. public school and private school elementary middle and high school students who had never met him lined the streets of Madison mirroring the love that Officer Mumau had for the children and others. Hundreds of fellow law enforcement officers, emergency personnel, fire department personnel, elected officials, many of us were standing there, and those who may have never met this hero sat in the cornerstone at the Cornerstone Church and honored the memory of Officer Mumau. Truly, truly a loving sight to behold. Officer Mumau loved the Madison community and the demonstration in that love and support from the Madison community shows that Madison loved him. He made a big difference in a lot of lives. I still, today, I received another call about a task that he had done without any recognition. I just want to speak for all that are here tonight and all in the community when I say it hurts us to know that Officer Mumau lost his life in a community he served and truly loved. However, the outpouring of support and the love shown through, through the banners, messages, and open display of testimonies proved that he was he's loved and respected. His kindness and dedication will never be forgotten. Madison Precinct Officer Mumau, car 21C, your legacy burns forever in our hearts and our minds and our souls, and we, we, we will miss you dearly. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Pridemore. Without objection, we'll suspend the calling of the roll and ask the clerk to record the names of those members present throughout the meeting. Uh, is there a motion for adoption of the minutes of the meeting of January 17th, 2017? Without objection, the minutes of that meeting will stand approved as written. Madam Clerk, is there uh, a message or any message for that matter from the mayor? Yes, Vice Mayor, we have the following message from the mayor. Dear Vice Mayor Briley and members of the council, please find attached the state of Tennessee reporting form located on your desk required to be submitted to the local legislative body following a sale of bonds. This report is for the sale of $455,540,000 of general obligations bonds, series 2017 authorized by the Metropolitan Council by resolution number RS 2016-465. The bonds closed on February 2nd, 2017. The bonds sold by competitive bid on January 24th. The winning underwriter was Citigroup Global Markets, Inc. with a true interest cost of 3.153%. As always, we appreciate the Metropolitan Council's support on these important financing initiatives. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Clerk. That brings us to uh, elections and confirmations. Councilman Schulman is a report uh, from the Elections and Confirmations Committee. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor, members of the Council. Uh, there is a report from the uh, the Rules Committee. Um, I'm we sorry, just I, I got the name of your committee wrong. I, I, I apologize. You're trying to correct me, but go ahead. That's okay. We we knew that you had made an error. We were just trying to cover it up. I appreciate right. that. You're welcome. <laughs> All right. So uh, we considered uh, a reappointment, appointment, and, and a reappointment to the Solid West uh, Solid Waste Region Board. Uh, the reappointment of Mr. Kenneth McMichael Sr. for a term expiring December 15, 2022. Appointment of Ms. Uh, Vanessa Paz for a term expiring December 15, 2022, and the reappointment of Mr. John Sherman for a term expiring December 15, 2022. Lots of discussion, lots of very good discussion. We heard from uh, uh, certain members of the public. Uh, we heard from Public Works. This is a very important board. Um, I think it was made very clear that um, we understand the importance and uh, we expect uh, in the future probably a lot more discussion with that board to um, make sure that um, uh, as we proceed ahead, particularly for the next four years, uh, the board is um, working very hard like they have been to uh, provide us with a good solid waste uh, plan. 
Uh, having said all that, uh, we approved all the, uh, the, the two reappointments and the appointment, 840 against, and I would move for approval on all three. You have heard the motion for confirmation of Mr. Kenneth McMichael Sr., Ms. Vanessa Paz, and Mr. John E. Sherman to the Solid Waste Region Board. It's been properly uh, moved and seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Now, those are our only elections tonight, Councilman Shulman. We would like to recognize these three individuals who were confirmed tonight. If you will please stand as I call your name and remain standing until all, everyone's been introduced. Uh, to the Solid Waste Region Board, Mr. Kenneth McMichael Sr., Ms. Vanessa Paz, and Mr. John E. Sherman. On behalf of the entire council and the citizens of Davidson County, we wanted to thank you for volunteering and putting your expertise to work at the Solid Waste Region Board. Thank you very much. Before we move to uh, resolutions on public hearing tonight, I wanted there are a couple of announcements I wanted to make. First, uh, on January 3rd, we did um, adopt a change to the council rules, some changes, one of which uh, uh, you need to be remain aware of. Rule 38 now requires a roll call vote when there's an abstention on second reading, not just third reading. Um, and uh, secondly, uh, there is an added line of information that now appears on the agenda in zoning legislation, which requires in, uh, the a statement of who paid the application fee for the um, for for the zoning application. I'd like to thank Councilman Jeremy Elrod, the Planning Department, and the Metro Clerk's Office for adding this adi additional information. You'll see it on the first bill tonight, uh, which is BL 2017-595. It's on page 13, and it's sponsored by Councilman Hastings. I think it's an appropriate uh, addition to the agenda. Uh, offers more transparency for the public and the council. Uh, the last announcement um, is that we have quite a bit on public hearing tonight. And uh, we have some people who are here on public hearing uh, who cannot get into the room. Uh, I, I know that there are others in the room right now who are here on matters which will not have a public hearing tonight. So um, if you're on a matter that will not have a public hearing tonight, STRP, STRP. Um, there will not be a public hearing on that tonight. So we have people out in the hall who will have a chance to sp speak and um, we just ask that you show courtesy to your fellow citizens. That brings us to resolutions on public hearing. RS 2017-503, Council Lady Murphy, exempts answer restaurant located at 132 46th Avenue North On this one? All right. I'm not aware of that, but Councilman Pridemore. RS 2017-503, Council Lady Murphy, exempts answer a restaurant located 132 46th Avenue North from the minimum distance requirements for obtaining a beer permit. Council Lady Murphy. That would help. Um, do I, I'm, this is my first one. Committee reports or, yes. or the public, public hearing, hearing first? Open the public hearing, please. Thank you, Council Amir. With all those in support of 503, please raise your hand. Opposed? Seeing none, any, those in support wish to speak? Seeing none, I declare the public, I'm sorry, 
sorry, I saw, I did see one there. I, I would like to just address and thank Council, Councilwoman Murphy for all of her effort on this. Sir, if you uh, would give us your name. My name is Will Cheek. I'm Council to Answer Restaurant. And your address, please, sir. 1619 18th Avenue South, Nashville, Tennessee, 37212. Please, go ahead. So I just wanted to thank Councilwoman Murphy for all of her efforts on this. I know it has been a long project and we really appreciate it, so thank you. Uh, if any of the council members have any questions about what this does, I think everyone's familiar with it, but I'm a legal counsel. I'm here to answer any questions. Thank you. Any others wishing to speak? Come up to the podium. If not, I see, uh, I declare the public hearing closed. Council Lady Murphy. I'd like to move for approval with a brief explanation. Uh, need, uh, committee reports, I'm pleased. Oh, committee reports. Uh, Councilman, I think it's already been approved. I'm sorry. Okay. Now go on with your motion. Great. Thank you. Um, I, this, uh, this property has been definitely scrutinized for a long time. Even before I was elected to office, it has been looked at. And in fact, this is a property that you may have heard about in the news where it was overbuilt. Um, and, and after getting elected, they did have to tear those walls down and, and build what was approved in the SP. Um, at, at this time, I held a community meeting on this beer permit last summer, and it was overwhelmingly approved at the community meeting. The Neighborhood Association did not choose to hold a, a vote on this one for whatever reason, but they did hold a vote at the membership meeting on the previous restaurant that had a similar uh, concept of a full service restaurant, and it was approved. And so with that, I am um, going to ask for your support and approval on this. I know that there will be some traffic concerns and other concerns that we'll deal with once the restaurant gets open, but at this time, I'd, I'd appreciate your support in moving this bill, um, moving this resolution forward and ask for approval. Motion has been made and duly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, Councilman Primore. RS 2017 535, Councilman Hastings, exempts quality export bills. Hot Chicken, located at 4228 Ashland City Highway from the minimum distance requirement for obtaining a beer permit. Councilman Hastings. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. We're asked uh, open for public uh, hearing. Let's get the committee report Committee first. reports, yep. please. Councilman Pardew. Vice Mayor, this was deferred by rule. Uh, Councilman Hastings was in another meeting at the time. I, I think he wants to move. We can, we can still do the public. Suspension of the rule? Well, we, let's go ahead and do the public hearing. Okay, we thank can, you. Would all of those in favor of RS 2017-535 please raise your hands. Those opposed? Seeing none on either side, declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Hastings. Let's like to uh, suspension of the rules and move for approval. If There's a motion to suspend the rules. Are there objection? Con Councilman Shulman? Um, we're just checking. I understand that um, that the councilman needs to suspend the rules. Usually we just check to see what the problem was um, and uh, um, basically to see whether um, it really does need to go to the committee. If it needs to go to the committee, uh, actually I was here and I was here, I was working on legislation uh, in our office when th this bill came forth here in the assembly. So. Uh, I would ask for suspension of the rules so that um, the individuals who have been waiting for this beer, beer permit and we have been working on for a while can go forward with their plans in the restaurant. Okay. Then we're okay. Thank you, Mr. Seeing no objection, Mr. there's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. That brings us to bills on public hearing. BL 2016 330. Three, I'm sorry, sorry, 360. <laughs> Council, uh, Council Lady Hurt, Councilman Leonardo. Changes 10.0 uh, acres from AR2A to IWD zoning for property located at 3920 Stewart's Lane. Approved by the Planning Commission 701. Councilman, Councilman Leonardo. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. At this time, I would uh, move to defer this matter indefinitely. This motion to defer indefinitely. Properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. 
BL 2016 449, Councilman Scott Davis. It's been referred to the Planning Commission. Changes 1.13 acres from SP to R6A zoning for properties located at 123, 125, and 127 Cleveland Street and 904, 906, 908, 910, 908B, and 912 North 2nd Street. Councilman Davis. I'm sorry, Councilman. Go ahead. Wait, is this the one? 449. Uh, yes, uh, we have another bill tracking with planning. We'd like to withdraw this one. Vice Mayor, please. Motion to withdraw. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2016-476, Councilman Scott Davis. Approved by the Planning Commission 9 and 0. Changes 0.33 acres from RS5 to R6A zoning for property located at 901A Douglas Avenue. Councilman Scott Davis. Move for, oh, I'm sorry, open public hearing, please. Would all of those in favor of BL 2016-476 please raise your hands. Those opposed? Seeing none on either side, declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Davis. Uh, move for approval, please. Motion to approve. Properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2016-487, Councilman Kendall. Approved with conditions disapproved without by the Planning Commission 7 and 0. Changes 0.52 acres from RS5 to SP zoning for property located at 2007 23rd Avenue South, I'm sorry, 23rd Avenue North, to permit up to seven residential units. Councilman Kendall. Do I need a committee report? No, sir. Okay, uh, I'd like to open for public hearing. Would all those in favor of BL 2016-487 please raise your hands. Those opposed? Those in I see one opposed. I see those in favor like to come forward and speak. Please go ahead and line up. Everybody who wants to speak in favor, go ahead and line up. You'll uh, be given three minutes. And uh, please start by stating your name and your address. Thank you. My name is uh, Don Mundy. I'm the property owner, uh, 2007 23rd Avenue North and other properties in the neighborhood. Um, I just, uh, my support for this is uh, this has been an abandoned piece of property for 25 years. It's never had any residences on it. Uh, it's just a piece of, con half acre piece of concrete. Um, we went through planning and it was approved. We have worked with the neighborhood. Uh, I've had actually multiple neighborhood meetings, about four or five meetings. Um, and the plan you see before you is a compromise um, in discussions with the neighborhood. And um, uh, so I just want to give my support of the project. Thanks, sir. Hello, uh, I'm Grady Clopton. Um, actually live in the area. Uh, definitely want to give my support for the project. Um, right now we're discussing a, a lot that was just a big piece of concrete. You know, mattresses were there and just a lot of trash, debris. I think this will better the neighborhood. Um, so I just wanted to voice my, you know, opinion on, this, on the uh, matter. Thank you. Uh, my address is 1807 25th Avenue North. Thank you, sir. Good evening, Council. My name is Justin Mundy. Um, my father is the property owner here, but I live at 2306 St. Louis Street, approximately 200 yards from the subject property. Um, I actually had the idea of this being a great piece of property to uh, be revitalized, I guess you could say, when I first moved uh, to St. Louis Street three years ago. I wasn't in real estate at the time. I am in real estate now for full disclosure, so we'll be selling these houses, but I don't own any of the property. Um, what I saw was a, a blighted parcel um, adjacent to a, a transit corridor that was not gonna require any demolition of houses or any displacement of people. It seemed to me to be the perfect opportunity to revitalize a neighborhood. Um, I tried to get several other investors to do it and then eventually talked to my dad and he decided that it was a good idea as well and so we went forward or he went forward with purchasing the property. Um, right now it's a giant piece of concrete, it's a stormwater concern, it's a, an issue with people hanging out in the middle of the night and uh, doing all sorts of things. One of the neighbors who's not able to be here tonight has said that he's found syringes on the property and it's, it, it's just, it's something that needs to be updated and it's something that I be, believe is a good development for the neighborhood and a world where we're seeing some not good development sometime. Thank you. Hi, 
Hi, my name is Emily Pritchard, and I live at uh, 1722 23rd Avenue North, a few blocks away from the property. Um, my main concern, my husband and I are bringing our first child into the neighborhood this spring, so our main concern is crime. And right now, it's a vacant lot that does invite crime. Um, so if they, there's any small thing that somebody can do to try and erase some of the crime that's happening in our neighborhood, we would like for that to happen. Um, I guess that's my main point. Hello, thank you. Uh, my name is Jacob Kaysinger. I live at uh, 2412 Seaford Street uh, with my wife, Olivia. We're only two blocks away from the proposed project. Um, at 23rd and Lacey. And I'm here to pledge my support for the project. The land is currently a vacant concrete lot that has attracted trash dumping and drug use and would be considered dangerous. The lot has stood vacant for 30 years and if we don't let Mr. Mundy build these homes, it may set vacant for another 30. This project will bring much needed working class homes to our community that will attract families and young professionals. I believe this project will improve the safety of our neighborhood, while providing great homes that fit the character of the neighborhood. I urge you to please approve the special zoning request. Thank you so much. If y'all, I know it's there's a little bit of a delay between people, so if you'll just move on up, uh, I appreciate it. I know it's easier to lean against the wall. I would do it myself, I know, but. My name's Olivia Kaysinger. Um, we live at 2412 Seaford Street. I know, I think he said that earlier. Um, but I'm in favor of the project. Um, I think two points. One, it removes um, some blighted land, like he was saying earlier. It's abandoned right now. There's nothing there. It's not removing available housing stock. It's actually providing adequate housing stock at a reasonable price. Um, and I think it'll do a lot for the neighborhood. And I don't... Um, I don't foresee really anything bad about it. I think the best thing is we are gonna have progress, and so we need to make sure that we're making responsible progress, and I think this is it, so. My name is Tom Gilkison. I'm at 2307 Lacey Street, which is right next door to the property in question, and I'm in favor of this. Uh, I've been there for four years now. I've been picking up trash on the property. There's been about three couches, tires, uh, television sets, it's a dump, like everybody else has said, and I'm looking forward to having some nice new houses. Uh, it's also in the cut, my house is in the cut, so that's in the country, but in the city at the same time. So the crime in my area, I have, I have bars in the windows and doors right now, I'm looking to take those off at some point. Thank you. Hello, my name is Jessica Williams, and I live in um, 2115 Yemen Place, and I'm here because I do have, I'm in, in I am in full support of the project. I do have a client on Cephas Avenue has, that have seen tremendous difference in his um, street since new developments have been coming on um, in, the, in the neighborhood. And I believe that they have a well-designed plan. It looks great, it fits the area, and he's excited, everyone is excited to be able to see this project go through um, and help to improve the safety of the area. So I'm in full support. Hi everyone, I'm Sherelle Armstrong. I also live at um, 2015 Ewing Street. Um, I am full support of this project as well because I think they will beautify the neighborhood and will also increase property values around there. So, yeah. Hi, I'm Keisha Clopton. I live at 1807 25th Avenue North. Uh, I just want to say that I'm in full support of the project. I think it'll do a few things. I think it'll reduce uh, some of the crime that's in the neighborhood. It'll bring families into the neighborhood. Uh, I've had an opportunity to look at the plans. I think these are, you know, reasonably priced homes, and it's just going to improve, improve the overall aesthetic in the neighborhood. Thank you. My name is Mike Geiger. I live at 1800 Holly Street in Nashville, Tennessee. A uh, longtime resident in Nashville, and I'm for this too. I'm all for uh, things that, that help uh, our uh, city neighborhoods like that, and I think this is a fine project. I'd like to use the remaining part of my time. I know there was a request for some room to be made. There's some other issues on the docket, and not much going to be said about STRPs tonight, but I want to make everyone aware that this place is packed with STRP supporters and that there are another 200 in the hallway. Thank you very much. They're not if, clapping for me. Okay, everybody, raise your signs up again. 
Let's see him. Okay, everybody with the sign should step outside. <laughs> that each and every one of the people sitting on this side um, have or are here all night to show respect to the individuals who come to speak on issues that are important to them. And for that display of disrespect to take place, if you think that helped, you gotta, you're wrong. There you go. Okay. Good evening, Metro Council members. Thank you for considering Bill uh, 487. Um, my name is Tiffany K. Part. I am a realtor and an urban planning consultant where I help my clients envision, plan, and implement projects that are based on sound planning principles. Um, tonight, I want to kind of wrap up what all of the neighbors have said in support. Um, the request was unanimously approved by the Metro Planning Commission um, on October 13, 2016, um, based on the following attributes. The site is located near Transportation Corridor, Clarksville Highway, and would be um, would provide housing near transportation options. It's also near the Buchanan Street corridor where new housing would uh, support existing and new businesses. Um, housing is not being removed from the site. Currently, the site is a vacant, um, completely paved over lot. Um, so new housing will upgrade um, this upkept, unkept site. Um, the project's layout is in context with the surrounding neighborhood with regard to scale, spacing, and design of the homes. Um, sidewalks will be added along this project's frontage but then also leading to Clarksville Pike, so it's not even in front of my client's property. He's adding new sidewalks to the neighborhood, and my clients are providing a mixture of infill housing, whereby three of those units uh, will appeal to those within the workforce housing income ranges. Um, we want to thank everybody, um, the neighbors who participated in um, discussing this project. We held, um, uh, announced this project at the t uh, June 28, 2016 North Nashville Leadership Council meeting, and then had four subsequent neighborhood meetings where this project was discussed extensively. So thank you to uh, Councilman Kendall for facilitating those discussions, and thank you for all the members of the neighborhood who participated. Anyone else in favor? Seeing none, those opposed? Ms. Bam, come on up. Good evening, Council members. My name is Stephanie Ladd, and I reside at 1838 25th Avenue North. I stand in opposition to this zone change as, pre as presented. I am not in opposition to development in my neighborhood, but I stand in favor of development that produces a sense of community to our new residents as well as our current residents. Our neighborhood, as you have heard, has met on four different occasions to discuss this proposed zoning change and development. The meeting has, meetings have been contentious at best. Um, some of the people that you see speak to you in favor of this, um, very few of them were present at those meetings. I and other are, others are opposed to the density of this project, and our concerns were clearly communicated to the developer on December the 3rd, 2016. Seven single-family homes on 5.2 acres ranging in size from 1,200 to 1,800 square feet are not consistent with the current neighborhood density, and they are some eight feet apart. That is not consistent either. While the developer has included three homes that deem as affordable at 225,000, they are positioned on the lot facing an alley, and the parking lot for the other residents will literally be at their front door. These residents will be subject to the noise created by the coming and going of the other residents in the larger, more expensive homes. This design does not create a sense of community, but a sense of have and have nots. While the development looks good on paper, it does not trans well, translate well to the actual property. While these and other reasons are opposed this request as presented, this does no, the time does not permit me to fully explain. With this said, I request that Councilman Kendall and this council defer this zoning request and send it back to the Planning Commission for further review and redesign to include the active involvement of the community. Thank you. Thank you. Declare the public hearing closed. Council Lady Hurt. Thank you, uh, Vice Mayor. I was uh, concerned with the, some of the things that she said in terms of the three homes that were going to be workforce housing. I was 
wondering what was going to be with the other four of the seven. And, and, and I'm very familiar with that community and to put seven houses on that lot seems to be quite a bit to me and wondering at what levels those homes are gonna be based on the other homes that are in that area. Many of the people in that community is concerned with gentrification and, 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 and they also need education about development and, and all that takes place in a community. So I'm not sure that we really have a true uh, sampling of those people who are here, who are for and those who are truly against the project because the lack of education in that community. And I am I'm, I'm concerned and I would like to see some more discussion before I approve this particular uh, pro uh, project. Thank Count you. Councilman Kendall. I would like to move approval with a comment, please. I certainly appreciate uh, the people who came tonight and also appreciate those who didn't come tonight. Uh, we had four meetings, as they mentioned, uh, some of them were kind of contentious, but we did have uh, the last meeting. I invited the tax assessor, I'm sorry, assessor of property, uh, the trustee. We had people from planning, and we, we spent about an hour and a half explaining what was going on with this project. There were people that were concerned about gentrification, that this would open a door of some sort to gentrification in the area. This project is located right off the corner of Clarksville Highway, a major thoroughfare. Uh, as uh, Mr. Mundy mentioned earlier, it's been vacant for years. It, it used to be, a, uh, I believe, a uh, tire shop or something there, a uh, mechanic shop. Uh, the people all, some people were also concerned about parking, and some people were concerned about how this would impact taxes. Well, I hope that at that last meeting, the people who made presentations cleared up a lot of those concerns. I think they probably did because most of, a lot of the people were there that who spoke against it. I told them to please come tonight and speak to the council if they opposed it, and I see that very few came, only one. So I, I believe it's a good project. I had spoken with Mr. Mundy prior to uh, this development, and I encouraged him to have some of the houses on the property to be workforce housing or affordable housing, which he did in the plan. There's some misconception, there were some misconceptions about what the property, what the houses would be built out of. Some people say it was gonna be tin and things of that nature, but we straightened out all of that. Uh, the other concern was the, the density, the distance between the, the houses. The ones that's facing 23rd are actually 22 feet apart. Uh, the ones on Lacey and uh, on the alley uh, entrance are eight feet apart, but I think the requirement is six feet apart, and so these are even wider than that. So I'm going to move approval on the project. Motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in You'll have, I mean, you, uh, Councilman Kendall had the opportunity to provide that. Um, you'll, this, of course, will be going before the Planning and Zoning Committee on third reading, and there'll be an opportunity to discuss that there. I'm not sorry. Hold on, madam. I didn't hear the question. The four houses, there's a total of seven houses that was stated to be built, and three should be workforce housing, and I was questioning the uh, other four. Well, well, the other four, I believe, uh, about 1,700 square feet, and they will be uh, assumed sold at market price. Do you know about how much that would be? whatever the market demands. I mean, I, I, I can't say what you, that would be. Y'all will have plenty of opportunity at the committee meeting uh, to discuss this. Motion to approve, properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Aye. Madam Clerk, will you open the machine, tally the vote. Blood 
Madam Clerk, if you'll close the machine tally vote. I'm sorry. One abstention. Motion carries. BL 2016-488, Councilman Sledge, approved by the Planning Commission 6 and 0, changes 0.14 acres from IWD to MULA zoning for property located at 1267 Second Avenue South. Councilman Sledge. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Due to notice issues uh, from the applicant, I'm going to need to defer this to the first meeting in March, please. Motion to defer to the first meeting in March. Properly seconded. All in favor? Oppo aye. Uh, opposed? <laughs> Got me discombobulated. Motion carries. <laughs> Deferred to the first, first meeting in March. BL 2016-489, Councilman Sledge. Approved by the Planning Commission 6 and 0. Changes 0.34 acres from IWD to MULA. Zoning for properties located at 1277 and 1285 2nd Avenue South. Councilman Sledge. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. It's the same issue. I have spoken with the applicant. They're getting their notices out. Appropriately, I would ask you to defer to the first meeting in March, please. Motion to defer to the first meeting in March. Properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, BL 2016-491, Council Lady Dowell, Councilman Coleman, disapproved by the Planning Commission 9 and 0, amends the Metro Zoning Code pertaining to minimum glazing requirements in certain single-family and two-family residential uh, zoning districts. Council Lady Dowell. Thank you. I want to uh, defer this bill indefinitely. Motion to defer indefinitely. Properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2016-493, uh, uh, Council Lady Henderson, O'Connell, and others referred to the Planning Commission. Amends the Metro Code pertaining to sidewalks. Council Lady Henderson. Thank, thank you, Vast Mayor. Um, a lot of good work is going into this bill. We've met with a lot of stakeholders, and we're moving towards a second substitute um, with the draft, and so um, because we're continuing to work on this and want to get more feedback, I would um, move that we defer, please, to the first meeting in March. Motion to defer to the first meeting in March. It's properly seconded. All in favor? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. All right. Um, I'm going to Councilman Pridemore. There you are. Sorry. BL 2016-513 sponsors uh, Wayner, Elrod, and Allen approved with uh, amendments by Planning Commission 1040 against. Amends the Metro Code pertaining to the Department of Water and Sewage Services. Council Lady Wiener. Thank you, Chair. I appreciate it. I um, want to defer those two meetings with a very brief explanation. Okay, Council Lady, uh, there's a motion on the floor to defer two meetings to the March public hearing. Okay, that is the motion. Do I have a second? Yes. Newly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Council Lady? Thank you so much. I appreciate it. This has been an extraordinarily lengthy and comprehensive process. We have had numerous stakeholder meetings and are continuing to work on the final pieces of this. We want to give everybody who has an interest in this an opportunity to um, explore all of the ramifications. And as we complete this, we hope to be ready for the public hearing in, in two meetings. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Pridemore. BL 2016-436, Councilman Kendall, approved by the Planning Commission 801, changes 0.12 acres from R6 to ORIA, zoning for property located at 407 31st Avenue North. Councilman Kendall. Better reports. Uh, no, we just need to, we'll go straight to all right. public hearing. That's right, this is still on public hearing. We're still on public, public hearing. hearing, please. Would all those in favor of BL 2016-536 please raise your hands. Those opposed? So one in favor, none opposed. Close the public hearing. Uh, Councilman Kendall. Move approval. It's motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2016-537. Councilman Hastings, approved by the Planning Commission 7 and 0. Changes 0.12 acres from CL to MUNA. Zoning for property located at 2214 Gaines Street. Councilman Hastings. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I would like to open the public hearing. All those in favor of BL 2016-537, please raise your hands. Those opposed? Seeing none on either 
so I declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Hastings. Thank you again. We'd like to move for approval. Motion to approve, properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2016-538, Councilman Sledge. Approved with conditions, disapproved without by the Planning Commission 7 and 0. Amends 0.95 acres of a preliminary SP for properties located at 1267 and 1271 3rd Avenue South to permit a mixed-use development with up to 89 residential units and a maximum 8,500 square feet of non-residential units. Councilman Sledge. Thank you, Ms. Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing. Well, all those in favor of BL 2016-538, please raise your hands. Those opposed? Seeing none on either side, declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Sledge. Thank you, Ed. Move approval, please. So motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2016-539, Councilman Withers, approved by the Planning Commission 10 and 0, applies a contextual overlay to 16.21 acres for various properties located along Colbert Drive and Shadow Lane. Councilman Withers. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing, please. Would all those in favor of BL 2016-539 please raise your hands. Those opposed? Seeing none opposed, do those in favor wish to speak? Declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Withers. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to thank everyone who came out today, especially I'd like to thank Mr. Uh, Steve Osborne, who uh, is here tonight and was very instrumental in getting uh, some of the neighbors there together uh, on these uh, couple of streets over in that vicinity. And uh, also would like to thank my colleague, uh, Councilmember Anthony Davis. This uh, Colbert, the north side of the street, is actually in District 7, and the south side is in 6, as happens sometimes. So we uh, both support that and appreciate the efforts of all the neighbors to educate each other and reach a, a consensus on that. Thank you so much. Move approval. Second. Motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. We can take the next two in order together. BL 2016-543, Council Lady Van Rees, approved with conditions, disapproved without by the Planning Commission 10 and 0, amends 9.98 .9 acres of a planned unit development overlay for property located at 1497 Chadwell Drive to permit the addition of 13 multifamily units uh, for a maximum of 49 residential units. BL 2017-544, Council Lady Van Rees, approved by the Planning Commission 10 and 0. Changes 9.98 .9 acres from RM4 to RM6 zoning for property located at 1497 Chadwell Drive. Council Lady Van Rees. Uh, open the public hearing, please. Would all those in favor of BL 2017-543 uh, and 544, please raise your hands. Those opposed? Seeing none, declare the public hearing closed. Council Lady Van Rees. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to move approval with a brief comment. Floor is yours. Uh, just wanted to let uh, the council members know that uh, we did meet with the HOA on this property twice, and uh, they voted to approve at our last meeting, and so with full confidence, I ask for your approval. Motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Also take the next two together, BL 2017-545, Councilman Pulley, approved by the Planning Commission 9 and 0, applies a contextual overlay district for 11.31 acres of various properties located along Gray Bar Lane, southeast of the intersection of Drawn Avenue and Granny White Pike, and BL 2017-546, Councilman Pulley, approved by the Planning Commission 9 and 0, Changes 11.31 acres from R10 to RS10, zoning for various properties located along Gray Bar Lane, southeast of the intersection of Granny White Pike and Drawn Avenue. Councilman Pulley. Thank you, Mr. President. Before I uh, move to open the public hearing, there's a pretty good sized group of people here to speak on this issue, uh, and they're out in the hallway and they can't get in, so can we reach out for them and let them in the chambers at this point? All right, I'd like to move to open the public hearing. Would all those in favor of BL 2017-545 please raise your hands. I'm going to let him filter in just for a second there, Councilman Poley. Thank you, sir. All those opposed? Now, this is not a trick question. For <laughs> Seeing none opposed, do those in favor wish to speak? Declare the public hearing closed. Thank you for coming and thank you for being patient outside. Councilman Pulley. I would move uh, to approve both bills. It's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? 
Motion carries. BL 2017-547, Councilman Hastings, approved with conditions, disapproved without by the Planning Commission 9 and 0. The change is 0.49 acres from RS to SP zoning for property located at 1822 River Drive to permit two residential units. Councilman Hastings. Thanks, Mr. President. We'd like to open the public hearing. Would all those in favor of BL 2017-547, please raise your hands. Those opposed? I didn't see any on either side. Did you, Councilman Hastings? Declare the, is there, oh, I'm sorry, Roy. Sorry, Mr. Dale. W one in favor. Okay. None opposed. Thank you, sir. Uh, I will still declare the public hearing closed, I'm assuming, Mr. Dale. <laughs> Councilman Hastings, the floor is yours. All right, Mr. President, I'd like to move for approval. Motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-548, Councilman Sledge, approved by the Planning Commission 9 and 1. Changes 0.41 acres from MUL to MULA. Zoning for properties located at 1214, 1216, 1218, and 1220 Martin Street. Councilman Sledge. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I move to defer to the first meeting in April, please. Motion to defer to the first meeting in April. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-549, Councilman Swope, referred to the Planning Commission. Applies a historical landmark overlay district for 1.6 acres of property located at uh, 10611 Concord Road. Councilman Swope. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. At this point, I move to withdraw this bill. It's a motion to withdraw. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion Thank carries. You. Thank you. Take the next two together. BL 2017-550, Councilman Syracuse, approved by the Planning Commission 9-0. Chan cancels 2.52 acres of a planned unit development overlay district for properties located at 2203, 2205A, and 2207 Pennington Bend Road. And BL 2017-551, Councilman Syracuse, approved by the Planning Commission 9 and 0. Changes 2.52 acres from OR20 to R15 zoning for properties located at 2203, 2205A, and 2207 Pennington Bend Road. Councilman Syracuse. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Open the public hearing, please. Would all those in favor of BL 2017-550 and 551 please raise your hand. Those opposed? Seeing none on either side, declare the public hearing closed. Councilman uh, Syracuse. Thank you. I move approval. It's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-552, Councilman Hastings, approved by the Planning Commission 9 and 0. Changes 0.18 acres from IWD to MUNA zoning for property located at 1319 Baptist World Center Drive. Councilman Hastings. Yes, Mr. Vice Mayor, I'd like to open the public hearing. So, uh, so would all of those in favor of BL 2017-552 please raise your hands. Those opposed? Seeing none on either side, declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Hastings. Yes, sir. We'd like to move for approval. Motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-553, Council Lady Roberts, approved with conditions, disapproved without by the Planning Commission 10 and 0. Amends 1.37 acres from R6 to SB zoning for properties located at 105 and 107 DeMoss Road and DeMoss Road unnumbered approximately 330 feet south of Medina Avenue to permit up to 13 residential units. Council Lady Roberts. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing, please. All those in favor of BL 2017-553, <laughs> please raise your hands. I see it. Those opposed? Seeing none, declare the public hearing closed. Uh, Council Lady Roberts. I'd like to move for approval. Motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-554, Councilman Sledge, approved but, uh, with conditions, disapproved without by the Planning Commission, 10 and 0. Changes 2.28 acres from R6 to SP zoning for properties located at 431 Wingrove Street and 1250 Byram Avenue to permit up to 83 residential units. Councilman Sledge. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing. All those in favor of BL 2017-554, please raise your hands. See some. Those opposed? Seeing none, do those in favor wish to speak? De declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Sledge. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I move for approval. Motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Substitute bill, BL 
2017-155, Council Lady Murphy, disapproved by the Planning Commission 7 and 2. Changes 39.53 acres from R10 and RS40 to RS10 zoning for various properties located along Clearview Drive, Crescent Road, Estes Road, Westmont Avenue, and Woodmont Circle located southwest of Wilson Boulevard and Woodlawn Drive. Council Lady Murphy. I would like to introduce the substitute. There's a motion to substitute. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion Motion carries. I'd like to refer this back to the Planning Commission. Uh, uh, has this been advertised for the public for public hearing? Do you want to open the? Do you want to have no. the public hearing? Yeah. I want to defer the public hearing and refer it back to the Planning Commission. Motion to defer. How long did you want to defer it? The March. Public First meeting hearing. in March. Yes. It's a motion to defer to the first meeting in March and refer the substitute back to the Planning Commission. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Council Lady. BL 2017-556, Councilman Hastings, approved by the Planning Commission 7 and 0. Changes 0.25 acres from RS5 to MULA zoning for properties located at 1221 and 1223 Brick Church Pike. Councilman Hastings. Again, thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing. All those in favor of BL 2017-56, please raise your hands. Those opposed? Seeing one opposed, but, uh, or two opposed, if you'd like to come uh, up and speak, step up to the mic, state your name and address, and uh, be given three minutes each. My name is Thomas Scrivey. I live at 418 West Hampton Road. Uh, I own the property at 12, uh, 1225 Brook Church Pike. Uh, I've been on it probably for about 40 years, and what has happened, uh, this gentleman has already built on the property, and uh, what he did, he added to the church without the land, so <laughs> that's what happened, that's the reason why I oppose it, because uh, what it is, they want to make it out of residential section, it's already commercial, of course it's in the R5 district. <laughs> And I, I would like to uh, for him to cancel the building on the property, sir, if it's possible to do that. This is my first time here, and I've never been through this before. Yes, you're doing good. I'm, you're doing good. I'm over, I'm over, I'm 80 years old, so y'all excuse me if I didn't approach the right way, but I just want to make myself clear, you know, what happened to me. Thank you, sir. I'm, I'm sure Councilman Hastings will reach out to you. Seeing no one else, declare the public hearing closed. I'll, Councilman Hastings. Thanks again, Vice Mayor. I'd like to move for approval. It's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-557, Councilman Sledge. Uh, referred to the Planning Commission. Applies the Neighborhood Conservation Overlay District for 13.76 acres for various properties along Hillview Heights, Cisco Drive, and Inverness Avenue, uh, northeast of Valk, Valk Lane and DeWeese Avenue. Councilman Sledge, I'm pretty sure I messed that one of those right. up. But roll on. Roll <laughs> Thank on. you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, I'd like to defer to the first meeting in March, please. Motion to defer to the first meeting in March. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-558, Council Lady Roberts, approved with conditions, disapproved without by the Planning Commission 10 and 0. Amends 0.45 acres from R8, R8 to SP zoning for property located at 6370 Ivy Street to permit up to four residential units. Council Lady Roberts. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing, please. There, uh, so all of those in favor of BL 2017-558, please raise your hands. Those opposed? Seeing none opposed, declare the public hearing closed. Council Lady Roberts. I'd like to move for approval, please. There's a motion uh, to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, BL 2017 uh, uh, Councilman Hastings, Rosenberg, and Elrod. Councilman Hastings, Rosenberg, and Elrod. Amends the Metro Code to allow members of the Metro Council to initiate applications to amend the official zoning map of property owned by the Metropolitan Government. Um, 
Councilman Rosenberg, you're second on the list. Committee reports, please. No. Open the public hearing. Open the public hearing, please. Yeah. Not much zoning going on in Bellevue, I'm guessing. <laughs> <laughs> would all those in favor of BL? Would all those in favor of BL uh, 2017 559? Please raise your hands. Those opposed? Seeing none on either side, declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Rosenberg. Move approval. <laughs> With such confidence. Authority. Yeah, there you go. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. Councilman O'Connell. <laughs> Councilman Sledge. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Could I get a, I wanted to ask some member of the planning department if they could explain the no recommendation from the planning commission. We looked at the bill and we couldn't apply any planning principle to that bill uh, one way, either for or against it. So we gave no recommendation. It, the, the, no matter who uh, files an application for a zoning bill, the bill still will have to come to the planning department and be reviewed by all the departments and get a recommendation at that time. So it doesn't matter. Uh, from our perspective, we'll still have a chance to review it. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Councilman Hastings. Uh, yes. I, I'm sorry, I That's stepped right. out. I, but I, I, uh, actually, this bill, I would uh, move for uh, to defer this bill by two meetings. To okay. I, I'll get, I think I'm going to cover you. I, I, I think there's a motion to yeah. approve on the table. Oh, approve. Uh, oh, okay. there, Councilman Rosenberg. So, if you'd like to withdraw your motion, Councilman Rosenberg. I'd like to withdraw my motion that I stated so eloquently and confidently, please. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. That motion is withdrawn without objection. Councilman Hastings, motion to defer two meetings. Yeah, two Lord meetings yours. with a brief, brief explanation. Yours. All right, I would like to thank everyone for the opportunity to bring this bill forward. This bill is something that has already been in play for us as council members uh, until 1997. This bill was not necessarily something we needed to bring up. There were some things that went on in prior council that uh, made this go another way. I wasn't here during this time, but I do know that there is a lot of development that is going on here in our city. There's a lot of questions that our constituents are asking us that we can't answer at this period of time. And anything that goes on within our community for its development, either if it comes from the administrative office or either going forth from the private sector, we should have an answer for that. That on the area of zoning, we are responsible for areas of zoning in the city, which the charter gave us. We should have the answers to be able to zone different lands that are within our area that the metropolitan government has to meet the needs of our community. We have been trusted. We have been the ones who, who set the bowels or raised up our right hands and told the city and the individuals that are here in this city that we would hold up the charge and listen to what they have to say. You know, this is not a very, very popular thing because there's two sides to every story. But on this side, we must understand that we have a job to do. We can't put it off on anybody. We can't put it off on the administration. We have to have answers to life's questions. That is the reason for the, the reason for this bill to come forth. We have to do things the, the appropriate way. But at this time, we will move this bill, hold it for two meetings. We will meet with every committee, the appropriate uh, committees, to explain the reasons why. So everyone will have a, the reasons why, uh, answers to their reasons why this bill is coming forward. I would like to thank everyone for their time and their patience as we go forth to uh, answer life's questions for our constituents and the people that are here in this city and that are uh, trusting at us to uh, uh, actually make the decision so that the city, Nashville, can be a better place. Thank you. There's a motion to defer to meeting. This is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries.
That brings us to resolutions on the consent agenda. The, f the following resolutions are on the consent agenda. RS 2017-537, RS 2017-540, through 553, 540 through 553, and 537. Do any of, do any of those need to come off of the consent agenda? If you'll bear with me. RS 2017, RS 2017-537, Councilman Cooper. Uh, approves a major cultural institution grant for the Tennessee Arts Commission to the Metro Nashville Arts Commission to provide general operating support. RS 2017-540, Councilman Cooper, Council Lee Gilmore, approves the Metro Animal Care and Control Fee Schedule. RS 2017-541, Cooper and Gilmore, approves an adoption preparation heartworm treatment grant from the Petco Foundation to the Board of, Me of Health to increase efforts to battle heartworm disease for animals to increase their chance for adoption. RS 2017-542, Cooper and Gilmore, approves an amendment to a grant from the State Department of Health to the Metro Board of Health for immunization program activities and staffing. RS 2017-543, Councilman Hastings, Cooper and Pardue, approves a grant from Marathon Petroleum Company LP to the Nashville Fire Department to purchase high flow nozzles and monitors to assist with hazardous material incident responses. RS 2017-544, Councilman Kendall, uh, Cooper, and Pardue approves a grant from the Tennessee Highland Rim Healthcare Coalition to the Nashville Fire Department for the purchase of rapid kits to assist with patient care in mass casualty events and to enhance audiovisual equipment for the Nashville Fire Department Training Academy. RS 2017-545, Council Lady Henderson, Cooper, and Allen approves an amendment to an agreement between the Metro Parks and Recreation and CSX Transportation Incorporated for the construction of the Warner Park Pedestrian Tunnel. RS 2017-546, Council Lady Henderson, Councilman Cooper approves a grant package from the Friends of Warner Park to the Metro Board of Parks and Recreation to provide staffing for the Warner Park Center and the SWEAT program. RS 2017-547, Councilman Sledge, Cooper, and Henderson approves a grant from the Greenways for Nashville to the Metro Parks and Recreation Department to provide funding for a picnic shelter to be built in association with 440, sorry, with a, in association with the 440 Greenway at Gale Lane Park. RS 2017-548, Council Lady Dow, Cooper, and others approves an intergovernmental agreement between the State Department of Transportation and the Department of Public Works for construction of the interchange modification at I-24 East at Hickory Hollow Parkway. RS 2017-549, Elrod, Blaylock, and others approves an intergovernmental agreement between the State Department of Transportation and the Department of Public Works for traffic signal improvements at the intersection of Harding Place at, from Edmondson Pike to Paragon Mills Road. RS 2017-550, O'Connell, Elrod, and Allen authorizes Zeus Enterprises LLC and Susie Wong's House of Yum to construct and install an aerial encroachment at 1515 Church Street. RS 2017-551, O'Connell, Elrod, and Allen authorizes Broadway Hotel LLC to construct and install aerial encroachments at 110 Third Avenue South and 215 Broadway. RS 2017-552, Gilmore and, and Dowell designates Friday, February 3rd, 2017 as National Wear Red Day in the city of Nashville and marking the 14th annual National Wear Red Day and the American Heart Association Go Red uh, for Women movement. I have a red tie. RS 2017-553, Councilman Shulman requests the Davidson County Delegation to the Tennessee General Assembly to support improving manufacturing, public roads, and opportunities for a vibrant economy or IMPROVE Act uh, introduced by Governor Bill Haslam. Uh, all right. That brings us to committee reports. Uh, Councilman Bednay, ad hoc affordable housing. Okay, we'll come back. Councilman Cooper, budget and finance. Um, thank you, um, Mr. Vice Mayor. Budget and finance met yesterday, and if I get all of these right, passed resolution 537, 
uh, 540, 541, 542, 543, 544, 545, 546, 547, 548. These resolutions on the consent agenda, they passed 13-4-0 against. Thank you, Councilman. Health, Hospitals, and Social Services. Councilor Lee Gilmore. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Health, Hospitals, and Social Services Committee passed resolution or recommended for approval resolution uh, 541 740 against, 542 740 against. Thank you, Council Lady Gilmore. Parks, Library, Recreation, uh, Public Entertainment Facilities, Council Lady Henderson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Parks, Library, and Recreation considered resolutions 545, 546, and 547. We recommended approval on all three, five in favor, zero against. Thank you, Council Lady. Council Lady Allen, Planning, Zoning, and Historical. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning, Zoning, and Historical recommended approval, 13 in favor, zero against, for resolutions 2017, 545, 548, 549, there are more, 550, and 551. Thank you, Council Lady. Uh, Public Safety, Beer, and Regulated Beverages, Councilman Pardo. Public Safety passed 543, 6-0. Five, five. And 544. 544 70. Thank you, sir. Public Works, Councilman Elrod. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Public Works recommend for approval 11, uh, 11 in favor, 0 against. Resolution 580, 548, 549, 550, and 551. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Bedney, uh, ad, ad hoc affordable housing. I'm here. I know you are. Sorry, Vice Mayor. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to say that this resolution was approved 640 against. Thank you, sir. Madam Clerk, I think we're going to, that's probably, that one's not on the consent agenda. I think I took that one off. But if you would record the, the committee report, we won't have to come back to it. Thank you. Councilman Hastings. Okay. All right. Councilman Shulman, Rules Confirmation Public Elections. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, the rules uh, looked at resolution number RS 2017 552 and 553, approved both of those 840 against. And I believe that's all the committee reports being needed. Uh, move for approval of all the resolutions on the consent agenda. This motion to approve the consent agenda is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Back then. That takes us back to RS 2017 536, Cooper Allen and others. Approves grants. I'm sorry, 519. RS 2017 519, Allen, Sledge and others approves a contract between Metro and Host Compliance LLC to provide services related to short term rental permitting and tax collection. Council Lady Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Councilman Coleman. Oh, I'm sorry. Councilman Swab. Councilman Coleman told me that. I just uh, Codes Fair and Farmers Market voted 3-4-0 against to withdraw. Thank you, sir. Council Lady Van Rees. Uh, similarly, the Conventions, Tourism, and Public Entertainment Facilities Committee uh, met and uh, agreed for uh, the letter to withdraw to be accepted. Four in favor, zero against. Thank you, Council Lady. Council Lady Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning, Zoning, Historical also uh, recommended withdrawal, 13 in favor, zero against, and I move for withdrawal with a brief explanation. Floor is yours. Thank you. Um, this bill is being withdrawn because there was a request from the council to go through an RFP process. Uh, which is already in the works, and that will um, put into place a contract to provide these services, but this is not the contract that will do that. So this, uh, we will still have a company that will be providing these services, but not through this contract. So I renew my motion for withdrawal. Motion to withdraw is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. RS 2017 536, Cooper Allen and others, approves grant not to exceed $8,339,401 from the Barnes Fund for affordable housing to certain nonprofit organizations selected for the express purpose of constructing affordable or workforce housing. Councilman Cooper. 
we've gotten the ad hoc report already, so we just need your report. Here, um, <clears throat> budget and finance met and voted uh, 1240 against uh, to approve the resolution, and uh, I would make the motion. Motion to approve is properly seconded. Councilman Shulman. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, just a couple of questions, and uh, in the interest of full disclosure, I talked to Mr. Jamison before. I do serve on the board of Dismas House, which is one of the grantees, and we looked at the uh, at the uh, the code and um, don't believe that there is any type of conflict of interest since I don't get paid for being on the board. Um, having said that, there's just a couple of questions. I wanted to make sure, um, I believe I had read this, but can we tell how many units of affordable housing that we are going to get based upon uh, different contracts that are provided? Hi, can you restate the question one more time? All right, so we have three different agreements uh, involved in this, and the question is how many units of affordable housing we're going to get? There'll be 332. And can you tell me how they're divided up? Sure. So there'll be 265 that will be um, through Urban Housing Solutions, and they're going to develop, let me give you exact information here. Um, it'll be three units that are for below 30% of the area median income, and then there'll be 34 units for 30 to 60% of the area median income. Then the next project is Dismas House, and um, for that project, there'll be 30 SRO um, dormitory style units, and that will include 56 beds within those 30 units, and that is all for 30% of the, below 30% of the area median income. And then the last one is for um, through Woodbine Community Organization, and they're going to do. Oh, I mentioned them. I'm missing one. Oh no, no, I'm I'm already good. I already did that. <laughs> so. Okay, so um, I guess the question. Okay, so we have overall. Uh, give me the total overall number again, if you don't 332. mind. Three hundred thirty-two. Three hundred thirty-two. So the question would be. The next question would be. It's a, these are all two-year agreements. Two-year agreements. To, de to construct, correct. To construct. So um, I guess the question would be, how do we make sure that these units are on schedule and that all units are going to be constructed? We are doing site visits and checking in with them regularly. So. Okay, because obviously it's the number of units and we want to make sure that if we're going to, that we get the full number. Right. Um, well, and also, yeah, we pay through reimbursement as well, so okay. they don't receive money until they do the work. Okay, and then um, after all this money is dispersed, can you tell me how much money is left in the Barnes Fund? Well. We recommend it $10 million, and so $10 million will be taken out, and then there'll be $5 million for the spring round that will hopefully launch in April. And then for the next budget, for 17 and 18, there'll be $10 million in the budget again. Okay, so I know that there are questions that are, uh, I know that there's uh, recommendations to put $10 million in the budget, right. but at this point, can you tell me, assuming that this passes, mm -hmm. how much money is left in the Barnes Fund at that point? Around five million. Around five million dollars. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Councilman Hastings. Just a uh, quick question. Uh, due to the SROs, the SROs are actually. Could you please explain to uh, the council members what those are? Uh, because I'm not sure if everybody understands what that is, and what is the you know, having SROs, does that meet the long-term care of housing for individuals and their families, or is it just SROs for individuals? Could you please explain it to us? Right. So it'll be um, units for individuals, not for families. Um, that project, again, is for Dismiss House, and so it's for folks who were formerly incarcerated. Um, so for some, that may be a transitional period as they, um, you know, come back into society and they look for jobs and different things like that. And so um, that's definitely a need that hasn't been met as much as it should be. Um, and so we're really excited about this project because it's going to fulfill that need. It's going to meet that need in many, in many ways. Um, in terms of long term, um, 
that's something that Dismas House is figuring out um, in terms of how long they are going to stay there. Um, but they can stay there longer if they need to, and if they need it to be short term, then it can be short term. Yeah, I, and that is one of my my concerns. It's just right. not meeting the needs, especially this body. We're thinking about taking care of the needs of the individuals that live in our communities mm -hmm. and that are coming forth, or it, we're not looking for uh, fraternity houses, sorority houses, and I know that's not the clientele that we're, we're putting into these facilities, but we're not looking for short-term stairs. We're looking to build a active community for all of our residents and not something that is mediocre or fly by night. Well, and that is- I'm sorry. That is very, very important for us and also my constituents because I, I, I receive the telephone calls and hearing their concerns about these, the short-term rentals and, uh, well, not rentals, but yeah, short-term rentals basically, not, that is a short-term rental type of thing. Uh, if they are renting rooms out in the house because it's not something that they actually own. So uh, we, we have a little bit more work that we're gonna have to do with that as well. I, I wouldn't say that it's a short-term rental. Um, I would say that it depends on the need of the unique client. And national residents are very unique in terms of what their needs are and where they are in their walk of life. And so we're trying to meet those unique needs as well. So we don't develop all rental that you know have the same makeup and the same look. Um, we try to be diverse in that. And so I think that that's fulfilling that gap. All right, uh, we, we see there's a lot of work to do. Thank you. Councilor like Karen Johnson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I also have a question. Um, where are these located? Um, so the Woodbine Rental Project will be in um, Councilman Glover's district at 5646 Old Hickory. Um, the Dismiss House unit will be, or units will be on Charlotte Avenue in Councilman Kendall's district. And um, the Urban Housing Solutions project will be um, in North Nashville on 26 and Clarksville, and that's in Kendallman, or Councilman Kendall's district as well. Were the um, locations select, were they opportunity areas? that have been identified? Areas of opportunity? Yes. Well, I mean, the way one defines an area of opportunity um, is a bit fluid. Um, there's a HUD definition of what areas of opportunity are. Um, we're crafting what our definition is um, through with MDHA and with the mayor's office. And so um, I, I don't know that I could say a solid answer to that, but there's definitely areas. These are all in areas with a lot of public transportation, um, also access to a lot of resources um, next to hospitals and grocery stores and jobs and things like that. And so um, when you speak of it from that lens, I would say that it, they are in areas of opportunity. Okay, I just wanna thank you all for your incredible work. Um, it is needed and we have to start somewhere. So your efforts are appreciated. And thank you for the transparency and also uh, uh, providing the areas where they are located. Thank you. Thank you. That's Ms. Sledge. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, as the representative on the commission um, for this body, um, I have been asked in the ad hoc committee to just give a little bit of background on uh, what the commission went through when they were discussing these properties. And so uh, just to give a little bit of background for the members, uh, one of the things that this body charged the commission to do was to look for a, uh, a more diverse body of applicants, to look for a larger body of applicants, and to help build capacity for those applicants so that they knew coming into this round of the housing trust fund that they knew what to apply for, how to apply, what was uh, what they were able to apply for, what may have fallen outside of those bounds. Um, so I, I was pleased as a commission member to see a larger number of applicants than we've had before. And as you can see in the bill itself too, a, a, a diversity of type and a diversity of geography. And I think that was something that the commission had asked for. I think it was something this body had asked for. And uh, the committee that came back with their work and presented these options based on their scoring. Uh, while we do have, well, the commission did have several questions about the different properties. Uh, everyone seemed in agreement that this was moving in the right direction and that we have an opportunity, uh, as, as the office mentioned, in potentially April to do even more with the, the funds from the sale of the old convention center. And I think the commission is really looking forward to uh, increasing what we're kind of saying, the, the innovative opportunities um, and looking at an even broader uh, base to try and see what kind of uses, what kind of areas 
um, how can we make sure that we have a diverse enough affordable housing type that meets the variety of needs um, that we are all very aware of in the city. So with that, I would appreciate your support. I think the commission uh, felt like the committee that recommended these did its due diligence. I know the commissioners uh, worked hard on this as well. And I think, we've, I think we are moving in a very positive direction when it comes to the Barnes Fund. Thank you. Councilman Broughton. Mr. President, I just want this put on the board, please. Councilman Bidney. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I, I just wanted to rise in support of this uh, legislation. Uh, as the chair of the AHAC uh, committee, I see many of you that are not on the committee that come to the meetings and that want to be part of it. Keep in mind that we have a lot of work to do. In the context of the need that we have in Nashville in the thousands of units, we're just building maybe 300 units today, but we're going in the right direction. We need your help in participating in helping us come up with different and newer ways to address all the complexities of the issue. And I already extended Councilman Hastings an opportunity to engage with the committee and find original solutions. Let's be proactive. Let's find solutions. Let's solve this problem. There's a lot of people out there that are waiting for us to build these houses. They are sleeping in the street in houses that are falling apart. We need to help them. And this council is stepping up and supporting this to bring very needed housing for lots of people. So thank you for your support. Madam Clark, if you don't put the machine. Councilman Coleman. No, we're waiting. You're. No, uh, you're the only one who hasn't voted. Okay. I had a point of order that I was just a little concerned with in terms of this machine vote. Um, is this the new process that we can ask for machine vote on any vote, one person sustaining, or are we back to two? Objections before we the go council to adopted vote. the council adopted a rule which says that any uh, if there's any negative vote on second reading that there'll be a machine vote. There's a negative vote, sir. Got you. You close the machine tally vote. Abstentions. I'm sorry, Madam Clark. If you could repeat that. I have 38 for, one against, no abstentions. Motion carries. That brings us to RS uh, 2017, five, 538. Cooper Gilmore and Hurt appropriates a certain account, appropriates to a certain account for the benefit of the hospital authority in an amount not to exceed $16 million. Councilman Cooper. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I call for a committee report. Councilman Gilmore. All right, thank you, Vice Mayor. The Health, Hospitals, and Social Services Committee uh, recommended for approval 540 against. And I just wanted to say that the Health and Hospitals Committee, the entire committee was present, and we give our wholehearted support uh, to Metro General, and we're just so excited that everyone's on board. Um, the CEO was there as well, well as the chairs and the staff, and so we're just really excited about this, and this is a part of the discussion that we had in the committee meeting. So we just wanted to say that uh, publicly, and also, I know that they've been waiting. Uh, they're out there in, in the back, the Metro um, General Board is, as well as the staff. And so could I ask them to stand, Vice Mayor, if you don't mind? You it's been a long night, so we appreciate them. If you could please stand. We thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Count Councilman Shulman. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Just one quick question. I know there's been a lot of discussion on it, and um, I understand the importance of doing this. Just curious about whether um, any discussions happen in budget or, um, or whether anybody can answer the question of do we expect uh, for the budget for this coming year for this amount to also be included in, in that budget? 
I know last year we had the same type of questions. We had $35 million. We've added $16 million, or we will add $16 million by this. But are we expecting, um, do we have any idea whether this is going to be included in the budget for next year? Uh, they have not yet submitted their budget request for the FY18 fiscal year. So uh, I, I don't have an answer for that. Okay, but do we have uh, any idea of, obviously, um, we do this every year, and, and we've been looking at supplementals, and I know there's a lot of different efforts being made to get this under control, but we don't have any idea at this point. Right, not, not today. I mean, we are working close, very, very closely with them and have uh, actually given them a little bit more time to put their budget together to submit to us for consideration. Okay. All right. Thank you. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, I think, I guess to follow up on that, could we get some illumination for both this body and the general public on, you know, I, I stand in full support of Metro General. I think our operation of a public hospital is one of those critical functions of the city. But I think it's unusual that we continue to have to offer emergency supplementals at this scale. I mean, this is not just, uh, you know, a matter of a few hundred thousand dollars. This is tens of millions of dollars and individual dollops that we're doing. I'd love to have a little more insight into the fiscal controls that are either in effect now or to, to Councilman Shulman's point, might be coming forward in future fiscal years so that we are not operating what appears to be blind. In, t in terms of uh, what they may do on an operational basis, they may need to take that question. But from a Metro Finance Department perspective, we are putting in controls uh, in terms of um, making sure that we have additional data before we release any funds to the hospital authority. And we have asked them to uh, provide cash flow reports and other documentation that will be coming to the Department of Finance as well as the Metro Council to make sure that we have an accountability framework in place. And I guess in terms of day-to-day -day operations, uh, they may be best suited to address that. I do know that they, um, that they are in the process or have hired a new CFO that, um, that has been put into place to address the audit exceptions that were recently released by Crossland. And they, uh, I would just add that I think that, that, that the board is taking the matter very, very seriously. I have been very, very pleased with the uh, finance committee and working with them, and I feel like that they are absolutely on the right track to um, to put some controls in place so that um, we can see these things come up sooner than later. Councilman Mendez. Thanks, Mr. Vice Mayor. Just to uh, respond to some of the questions. Um, uh, First, I would refer everybody who's watching on TV to watch the January 30th um, videotape of the uh, Budget and Finance Committee where th this was discussed at length, and the, also the Budget and Finance Committee from yesterday where it was discussed at length. Um, I approach the hospital from the perspective of not only a council person, but what I do professionally is to reorganize companies are in that are in distress. And there's no question that the um, issues being raised are extremely serious, and we're dealing with it the second year in a row. Um, the reasons why I'm okay with um, the uh, appropriation are, are several, and it has to do with being on the, the right road. Um, first, uh, this body, um, at the request of the mayor's office, increased the size of the board a few months ago, and the new board appointees are highly qualified uh, financial professionals and healthcare professionals. And I think really for the first time since the hospital authority came into existence in 1999, there's a strong working board as opposed to a ceremonial board that, that uh, may um, at some times in the past, more or less rubber stamped what the hospital administration was doing. Um, in order to have proper governance over the money and patient care, we need to make sure that every part of the government is playing their role from the mayor's office to Metro Finance to the council to the hospital authority. And I feel like the hospital authority is more empowered now to be engaged than they ever have been in the past. The second thing is 
um, that for the certainly the first time since um, we've been in office in this term, I feel like the hospital authority and the hospital administration are getting um, real-time control over their finances. I've been to meetings um, uh, with the hospital authority and their finance committee, and I can tell you that one of the things that I look for when I'm helping companies in financial distress is the ability to predict cash flow. Uh, a quarter or two in advance. And um, for, I think, the entire time we've been in office, the, the hospital authority has um, frankly not um, done a good job with that. They had three CFOs. They, they haven't known how to do that. Um, they're getting there, and I believe that between the hospital authority, people who are looking at it, and the administration people, um, that they understand that the number one priority is being able to predict what happens with cash flow, and that serves as a basis for building a budget. I think um, they all know that, at least from my perspective, when the budget uh, hearing happens in a couple months, that I have to hear, we built a cash flow prediction model, and we have met it for X number of weeks or months in a row, which would be the first time that they've said that since we've been in office. And, and they know that that's something that's critical, and I feel like they're on the right track for that. So um, has it been a mess financially? Yep. Um, have there uh, been changes made in the governance um, through the mayor's office and through what we've done? Yep. Um, is the board as new, newly reconstituted um, uh, approaching the job differently, yes. Um, I feel like it's on the right track, and uh, you know, obviously time will tell. It's a lot of money, but I, I think we're headed there. And this is all in a lot more detail in the couple hearings uh, that I mentioned that are on TV if anybody else wants to watch. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Councilman Elrod. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'm, I'm going to a couple of comments. I want to say I appreciate the finance department and the administration working to uh, get uh, this data and information together. Because to be quite frankly, to be quite frank, it's on the hospital administration to get things in order. Because I think there's going to be uh, coming very soon a lack of political will to be continuing to to uh, have mid-year um, extra allocations of funds to uh, Metro General because. Um, I think I asked this before, either on the hospital uh, or on, uh, I think, perhaps the uh, farmer's market, that there needs to be a, basically a truth in budgeting that we know at the beginning of the year where our monies are going to go and that those, those departments aren't going to have to come back. As uh, Councilman O'Connell said, just a few thousand dollars or even hundreds of thousand dollars, but tens of millions of dollars coming back to the council. So I think it's important that the, and I think they do, but I, I think it needs to be said publicly, that the hospital administration needs to know that it's up to them to get their things in order or else, I, and I don't know what they will be, but there could be serious consequences of what could be uh, happening with the hospital going forward. And that's going to be a serious detriment to um, the community they serve and the patients that they serve, because I think they serve a tremendous good in our city. But if things don't get, um, get uh, right, essentially, um, there, you're just not going to be able to keep coming back and asking for $10 million here and $16 million there, that eventually that political will is going to, going to run out. So I, I appreciate the finance department and the administration um, in trying to get th things under control, but also to the hospital leadership. I know you're doing it too. Um, and, not, and I guess to put pressure on you that this can't keep happening. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Thank you, Councilman Hastings. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I just wanted to rise and say that we need to put blame where blame is due. I really feel that there is an issue with communication. Uh, I am a supporter of the hospital. I really am in taking care of the constituents in the city. I don't know if there is a, a communication problem between us and the, the finance department or the, the mayor's office or whoever else. We approve the budget, but we need to have to where when there is a period to where something is asked, we need to be the people that hear what is being asked. We need to be the people that is carrying out those, those, those exchanges, not second win. I I think there's some, a lot of misunderstanding that is going on there and some things that are happening that we know nothing about. Uh, I have a little privy to some things, but I can tell you that I am very proud of what the hospital was doing before uh, that period happened. 
when they came to ask us for $10 million, because I was here, and uh, Councilwoman Wiener, who is, is, is my girl, but uh, all, all of that good stuff, she said it over and over again, you know, is that all that you need? That is, that is a whole separate thing, but one of the things that we find out is what was actually asked for didn't necessarily get to us. And that is a problem. So we need to make sure the communication is getting to the people that give out the cash flow so it won't look like somebody is doing some things that shouldn't be done. I, I pray that, they, that the allocation of these funds are going to go in the appropriate spots and that we will see the things that we need to see. But uh, at this point in time, uh, we pray that the hospital is able to, to take care of the uh, constituents in the city and who we represent. Thank you. Councilman Scott Davis. I rise in support, of course, for a hospital, which we all do. But I just want to remind people, and I think I've gotten a couple of gray hairs now, so I can remember, you know, back in the 80s and 90s, you know, when every time, you know, there was old saying and Forgive me if some of you don't remember, but there was an old saying, when Nashville needs care, Meharry and Hubbard are there. And if we remember that saying, Hubbard became General Hospital. And forgive me, I don't want to call you out, Ed Kendall. If I'm wrong, please correct me. Okay, but isn't that correct, sir? Okay. Um, I grew up in that hospital. When we first moved to Nashville, we moved into Meharry Towers right across the street, you know. Um, Herschel Warner with the mayor's office at the time, his brother was the dean and brought us down here for my dad to be at that hospital um, to practice and to teach other medical students. So I have have a keen relationship with that hospital. And that hospital, until this administration and this council and possibly the administration before this, have finally started to fully fund or try to fully fund this hospital. And this hospital for years has been underfunded and understaffed, and they've worked miracles. And this staff needs a hand, this council needs a hand. All of you are right, but we have to remember for years and decades, the hospital was underfunded and had to do miracles, you know, on a shoestring budget. Every time there was an incident, you know, as rare that it was at the Nashville jail or one of the um, prisons here, they were transferred to general and were given that care. Every time there was a, a weird incident or disaster, they were transported to General or Hubbard at the time. And people have to remember, that's our county hospital. People line up coming from out of county and other places to get care there. You know, Metro employees, I believe they get free care there too. You know, and don't have to pay a copay if you're a Metro employee. And so they're doing a number of services that Vanderbilt, because in St. Thomas is great, as wonderful. I love those hospitals. Anybody that helps our community is wonderful. They have to do a lot with less. And lots of times, especially in urban communities, you know, we have been having to do a lot with less. And now that we're finally here and getting the funding that we deserve, we probably need more, you know. But please do not hold anything or any of my colleagues anything against this wonderful institution because they have done so much for this community. You know what I mean? So much for a lot of us, and we know that. And, and we have to remember that they've been underfunded for decades, you know, in this town, and we're finally addressing that properly with this administration, this council, and the previous administration have also wrapped their arms around this hospital. And so we have to take that into account when we discuss this hospital. They cannot be on the same level as the St. Thomas or Vanderbilt because they weren't given the funds that they were given and the same opportunities, but they're performing at that level. It's sometimes better. There were more staff infections one year at Vanderbilt than there were at Metro General. And that's happened. I mean, and it's normal for that in the hospitals around the country, but we have to look at this, you know, you know what I mean, from a bigger scope here, and they're, they're doing a heck of a job over there. And I've been quiet a lot with this subject, but I couldn't be quiet any longer because they just do amazing work there. Thank you. Councilman Pardew. Sorry, Councilman. There you go, Councilman. Call for the question. Previous question, all in favor? Opposed? 
Motion carries. The resolution has been properly moved and seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. RS 2017-539, Leonardo Cooper and others, appropriates an amount not to exceed $530,000 from the undesignated fund balance of the General Fund of the General Services District to the Department of Finance for costs and expenses associated with the operation of the J.B. Knowles Home Assisted Living Facility. Councilman Cooper. Um, thank you, um, Mr. Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance met yesterday and approved 1340 against. Councilor Gilmore, do you have a committee report? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Councilman Leonardo. That's my bad. I'm totally, I'm totally. Uh, that's fine, that Mr. Vice Mayor. So we've got committee reports. Uh, so we'll, get, we'll finish the rest of them. Okay, sure. Yes, I like that. You always get a good report from me with that. Okay. So the Health Hospitals and uh, uh, Social Services Committee recommended 6 4 and 0 against, recommended it for approval. This time, I'd like to, uh, to move approval, and I would like to say thank you to John Cooper Metro Legal for all the work they've done uh, in trying to get the new operator in there. And, and I'm very sensitive to the uh, to the conversations that we were having at the Health and Hospitals Committee that uh, some council some concerns Council Lady Hurt uh, raised, and those things are those were definitely heard. So, and I'd like to move approval. Is there an amendment, Councilman? I don't believe it's, there is. Okay, well, if there is, then I'd like to go ahead and, and make a motion to uh, move the amendment. So the motion to amend is properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. You're now on your bill is amended. And I'd like to make a motion to uh, for approval. Motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. That brings us to ordinances on first reading. Without objection, we will take all ordinances on first reading except for BL 2017-590. We'll be holding that one back. Con con uh, Councilor Murphy. I would like to abstain from BL 2017 599, please. 599? Yes. One moment, please. One moment, please. So 588 needs to be pulled, too. So we're taking all bills on first reading except for 588, 590, and 599. Is that correct? Or what was yours again, Councilman Murphy? It is. Uh, Mr. O'Connell's bill, 599. All right. Okay. So uh, with that, with those three exceptions, is there an objection to take all remaining bills on introduction and first reading in uh, Council A. Roberts? I would like to abstain from uh, 583, please. All right. Okay, with uh, Council A. Roberts marked as abstaining on 583, we'll take all bills on introduction and first reading except for 588, 590, and 599. Is there a motion? Second. Motion and proper second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. That brings us to BL 2017-588. Councilman Elrod Cooper and others, an ordinance amending section 15.64.032 of the Metro Code by amending the graduated stormwater user fee schedule. Councilman Elrod, hold on just a minute. Councilman Elrod. 
Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I would uh, ask that or move that the first reading on 588 be deferred for two meetings, please. Motion to defer two meetings. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-590, Councilman Pulley, Cooper, and others. An ordinance uh, authorizing the acquisition of real property by negotiation or condemnation for the purposes of for the purpose of realigning the intersection of Hillsborough Road with Crestmore Road and Glen Echo Road. Councilman Pulley. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, inadvertently, there was a uh, parcel left off of this bill, and in consultation with uh, Metro Legal and our own legal advisor, it's important that we get this moved uh, on first reading, as there's some question as to whether or not we'd be able to do it on second. So uh, uh, it, it, this project has been going on for a long time and impacts a number of people, and it's important that we move it forward. So I would ask your indulgence uh, to suspend the rules so I could move that am amendment. There's a motion to, s and the, the reason for the suspension is that it's a late amendment, correct? Yes, sir. It's a late right. filed amendment. All right. There's a motion to suspend the rules. Councilman Shulman. Mr. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor, members of the council. So pursuant to our new rule, Rule 11, uh, Councilman Pulley came to the Rules Committee, explained the situation, and uh, we're good to proceed. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Pulley. Uh, with, uh, uh, they're uh, seeing no objection to the suspension of the rules. The floor is yours. I would like to move the amendment. Motion to amend. Properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion now carries. I'd like, I'd like to move the bill amended. Motion to approve as, as amended. Properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Thank Motion you. carries. BL 2017-599, Councilman O'Connell. An ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metro Code of Laws, the zoning ordinance of the Metro Government of Nashville and Davidson County by changing from R6 to SB zoning for properties located at 1719, 1721, and 1723 6th Avenue North, approximately 150 feet south of Buchanan Street to permit up to 11 residential units, all of which is described herein. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to move approval. This motion to approve is properly seconded. Did you pull this, uh, did Ms. Murphy, Councilor Lee Murphy? Yes, I need to abstain because it's um, because it's my father's property. Okay, all right. Yeah. Motion to approve is properly seconded. Uh, Councilor Lee Murphy is abstaining. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Councilman Bedney. Sorry, I was distracted. What? What's going on? Not a good time to be distracted. I, I, We're at the I, end of the bills on first reading. Oh, yes. I was going to ask for a suspension of the rules. Uh, uh, if I can explain. Floor is yours. So I had a, an amendment to a legislation for the Berkeley Allen legislation. And uh, I realized in, uh, after a file, you guys also the amendment. After a file, I realized that my amendment would have delayed and send her legislation back to the planning department. That wasn't my intention. I just wanted to uh, be able to introduce this legislation separated from what what they had been working on. So what I decided is to bring it back as a regular legislation instead of an amendment. And I'm hoping that, that you all will allow me to bring it up so we can uh, follow up with it and have a conversation about it on second reading. Thank you. Councilman Shulman. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Members of the council, Councilman Bedney also came before the Rules Committee uh, pursuant to Rule 11, explained the situation, wants it to move with the other bills that are pending on um, short-term rental property, and um, we, uh, we were okay with proceeding. Thank you. Is there objection to suspension of the rules? Seeing none, uh, that brings us to an yet-to-be-numbered ordinance, BL 2017. Uh, an ordinance amending section 17.16.250 uh, of the Metro Code of Laws to require the consent of adjacent property owners, homeowner associations, condominium, so condominium associations, or other such community associations prior to the issuance of a short-term rental prior permit. Councilman Bedney. Yes, thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, this legislation... Uh, in, motion. My Is there a motion? 
I'm, I, I'd like to make a motion to approve. Motion to approve is properly seconded. Floor is yours. So I'm asking for your support. Uh, I'm, I'm expecting this legislation to have some uh, uh, modifications, hopefully, as we discussed on second reading, but it's basically trying to address an issue that we see a lot in the suburban parts of the district where uh, people can actually pull uh, a permit uh, just saying that they have the support of the HOA when that's not the case and the city doesn't have the power to cancel that afterwards and it creates a lot of costs for the HOAs to deal with that. So I'm asking for your support so we can review this legislation. Motion to approve is properly seconded. Council Lady Roberts like to be recorded as abstaining. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. That brings us to bills on second reading. Bill 2016-473, Council Lady Mina Johnson amends 4.37 acres of the Hillwood Court at Nashville West Specific Plan District for property located at 6813B and 6817 Cherokee, I'm sorry, Charlotte, Charlotte Pike to add parcel one, 015 permit and permit a maximum of 50 residential units and where 34 residential units were previously approved. Council Lady Mina Johnson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, I would like to defer two meetings with a very brief uh, explanation. Uh, we and our neighbors and developers are still working on how to properly build the wall and how to properly mitigate the stormwater. So for that reason, uh, we'd like to defer two meetings. Thank you. Motion to defer to meetings properly seconded. Council Lady Allen. Would you like a committee report? I think planning, zoning, and historical at the request of the sponsor agreed uh, to a two meeting deferral, 13 in favor, zero against. All right. I just, it's on second reading, so I wasn't expecting your committee report. So, but <laughs> Councilman Elrod. Councilwoman Johnson, I have to ask who is paying for your wall? <laughs> There's a motion Thank to defer to meetings is properly seconded. <laughs> All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2016-484, Councilman Leonardo Elrod and meet Council Lady Mina Johnson. Am amends the Tennessee Code to require uh, approval of landfills, solid waste disposal facilities, and solid waste processing facilities prior to the construction of such facilities. Councilman Leonardo. A committee report, please. Councilman Vice Elrod. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Due to a lengthy discussion of the uh, legislation, uh, we uh, lost our quorum at the end of the meeting, so we don't have a recommendation at this time. Councilman Leonardo. Uh, at this time, I'd like to move approval with a brief explanation. Floor is yours. I would, I would like to say that you just in general, I know there's been a lot of discussion about the Jackson Law, and in its most basic sense, um, if you are trying to expand uh, in a landfill, right now you would just have to go through the solid waste real board and get approval by TDEC. Uh, the Jackson Law would make it to where you had to uh, go through three readings via ordinance, and there's a bunch of notice provisions in there uh, that require, uh, they're very robust. They would require signs uh, within three miles that have to be three feet by five feet wide. It dictates mailers and the like. Um, and so that's something that is, is very important uh, to my district, because if you look at District 1 and in the border area specifically, back in 1893, they had the House of Unfortunates, which was located on Main Street, and it was relocated to Asylum Road and changed to the Davidson County Asylum and Poor House. In 1917, uh, a, a home called the Pest House on Charlotte Pike closed, and they were transported over to uh, the Davidson County Asylum and Poor House. And in 1973, of course, uh, we got the Bordeaux landfill. And for years, District 1 uh, has been, seems like it's just been dumped on. Uh, and since we have the most uh, amount of vacant land still available, it doesn't look like uh, there's going to be any let up on that. And just as a matter of fact, uh, tomorrow, I mean, we spent today on the Jackson Law, and tomorrow we will be at the uh, State Air Quality Board uh, arguing about the uh, proposed compression station that's going to be placed in Jolton. Uh, I think the IT city has many parts. I envision a city that promotes uh, economic and social and environmental justice to all, and no community should be saddled with more um, environmental burdens or less environmental benefits than any other. And so I would like to note as well that the Bordeaux Hills Neighborhood Association uh, approves of this, the Gold Key Neighborhood Association approves of this, Royal Hills Neighborhood Association, the Haynes Park Neighborhood Association, the Whites Creek Community Club, and the Scottsboro uh, Community Club also uh, would support this legislation. Uh, there's two days of the year I would submit to the Metro Council that we are 
can't do anything, and that was yesterday, and that's tomorrow, but today we can, and I would like to move this bill forward, and I would ask your support. Um, obviously, uh, I had deferred this bill the first time it was set, uh, and then the committee uh, had asked, Public Works Committee had asked for a deferral, so if there was another deferral this evening, um, it would be an indefinite deferral. So uh, I am interested in having further conversations uh, with, to make sure that everyone's voice is heard is in the committee, but it is up for second reading, and I would request your support, and I would uh, move to uh, for approval at this time. Thank you. Council Lady Wiener. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I would like to rise and request that we either defer this bill to give everybody in the room the opportunity to fully understand it and to fully vet it. I think as Mr. Roten had pointed out, we have some issues with unintended consequences or intended consequences in that a judge could overrule what this 40 member body has decided if someone chose to take objection to that which we had voted for or against. And so I think that it behooves us to take a harder look at this, to really investigate what it is this means fully. And the simple fact that we had a public works committee that didn't have a full quorum um, speaks to the fact that not enough people on that committee had an opportunity to make a recommendation. So with that, I would either recommend that we defer this or just vote it down. Thank you. That's my Elrod. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'm going to make a motion to defer, or defer, and I'm going to ask Mr. Jamison to uh, explain how those deferrals will go, whether that would require a uh, indefinite deferral. Um, there was a lot of discussion, and this is uh, nothing against Councilman Leonardo. He has fought diligently and hard for this bill on behalf of his constituents. Um, but I think this is a complicated issue that, quite frankly, I'm not prepared yet to vote on um, to try to find the intended consequences, the unintended consequences. Um, there was testimony at the Public Works um, meeting. Um, that was very detailed, um, goes into different kinds of standards of law or, or uh, um, review uh, standards. Um, and I think there needs to be a lot more vetting of this legislation. Um, and I, I would ask that you uh, vote to defer this for, uh, I suppose, one meeting, or excuse me, I guess uh, one meeting so we can try to get a special public works committee meeting together to get the interested parties th um, there because this is a complicated issue. Um, if we're able to get a deferral, I'm going to be asking um, for presenters to basically sign up to speak. You have a limited time to speak and to also provide written material before the committee meeting. So because this is so complicated, I think there needs to be a detailed explanation of the different viewpoints and also any clients that any of the speakers may represent. That way there's full transparency of uh, whoever may be speaking to the committee. But I think, uh, I, I don't believe there's anyone, I'm, I don't want to speak for everyone on the committee, but I would say many of the committee members have spoken to me asking this to be defer deferred on second reading so that we we can make a recommendation on second reading and, not, and have it not go to third reading. So it's my personal, um, I guess, request, but also as committee chair of the Public Works Committee, I move to defer this one meeting so we can have a special um, a Public Works Committee meeting because this is a complicated issue that will greatly impact how we regulate and approve landfills and landfill um, expansions. And Councilman Leonardo, there are basically two large landfills in this, and I'll, I guess, put it in more blunt terms. Council Leonardo ha has one and Councilman Roten has one. Um, Councilman Leonardo is in favor of this bill. Councilman Roten is opposed to this bill. And I think we all want to help our fellow council members, but this is something that is going to have such a great impact. And I think everyone on the Public Works Committee, I think, understood the impact that this could have. I think we need to vet this more fully and to try to help our fellow council members and represent their constituents. So I would um, move for a one meeting deferral on councilman, or excuse me, uh, Mr. Jamison, how would that affect whether it be an, in, would that automatically trigger an indefinite deferral? Okay. Well then, if it triggers an automatic indefinite deferral, I'll make the I'll personally make the motion to put it on next or on the next available committee agenda whenever that can be after the indefinite deferral has to take place essentially. Because I, I'm not trying to hold up the bill indefinitely, but if that's what is uh, I guess the result of my motion, then I'll put it on the next. I'll make the motion myself to try to put it on the the next. Uh, uh, agenda um, because I'm not trying to hold up the bill I just want to get more information for our committee members and for the whole council thank you council lady Mina Johnson thank you vice mayor uh, uh, as a co-sponsor I understand if we fight it's going to be indefinite deferral and I do understand this is a very, very complicated issue. And we would like to help not only our fellow council member, but the community. Because those community are facing not only uh, 
landfill, but expansion. So when it comes to expansion, they do not have any voice right now. So this uh, bill will give some uh, me mechanism for the community to input. So for that reason, I'd be happy to bring to the uh, committee again uh, at the next meeting as a co-sponsor, if a uh, lead sponsor would agree with that motion. But for the, I really would like to uh, have, uh, give the community a voice. So for that reason, I would appreciate not to defy it, but bring back to the community or a special committee to give us more voice and really fully understand it. So I would ask not to defy it, just keep going and let us work on the, this bill. Councilor Lee Murphy. So I, I, I understand that we're now going to potentially be at facing the indefinite deferral. What I don't know is if we are on a timeline for the um, for potential or existing landfills in the county. But also, um, I know that we, in our rules, cannot amend on third. But I would think that we could still have a presentation and a special meeting before the third reading. And if there was some type of, of emergency or, or major amendment that was needed, the bill could could potentially still be through suspension of the rules amended. Um, and so I'm not sure what's the difference between deferring it to have a meeting, a uh, special meeting, or just letting it go through on second, have the special meeting, and, and still have it on third. So I guess my question is to whoever can answer it is if we are on a d deadline for that or not. I'll, I'll come back to you. I don't, I'm, you're, you're, you're lit up. Councilman Roten. Thank you, Mr. President. It's as simple as this. I have a landfill in my area. I don't know how this bill is going to affect that landfill. And that's one of the biggest issues in my district is that landfill. I need the answers that I want to get legally and how that landfill can move forward with or without this bill. And I want to see what's the best for my constituents in District 14. Uh, whatever we have to do, whether we have to have meetings, several meetings, I don't want this bill moving forward and continue to be moved without me getting the answers that I need. And um, it's as simple as that. Thank you, Mr. President. Councilman Rosenberg. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd just like to note that indefinite deferral means nothing other than we're deferring it without a definite date. It doesn't mean that it's gonna be pushed off any longer than one meeting. Thank you. Councilman Leonardo. This is only on for the second reading. And, uh, and with that said, I, I you know, to address uh, Council Lady Murphy's views, this is a, not something that can be amended. This is a, a bill that the uh, Metropolitan Council has to adopt in toto. Uh, this is something that we have to have. We can't even change it. It's something that uh, the General Assembly allows municipalities to opt into. Uh, and I don't have any problem with uh, having a meeting, uh, you know, a, a joint committee meeting or, or one in here uh, with all the committees. Uh, but again, this is just second reading and I'd like to, to move forward as far as if I'm aware if there's any real pressing issues at this point in time. I'm not aware that there's been any application filed in Councilman uh, Roten's district and I don't believe that there's been any application filed in my district. But with that said, I would make a motion to, to table the, the deferral. You can't do that after you've spoken, sir. Oh. You have to motion to table it has to be at the beginning of your comments. Okay. Well, then those are my comments. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Councilor Lee Johnson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I would like to make motion to table the uh, motion. <laughs> Floor is yours. Hmm? Yes, uh, as, uh, as my uh, fellow sponsor said, we don't know how this uh, Jackson law will affect or not. We really have to uh, understand uh, the consequences and pros and cons. And I think uh, both uh, Council Member Lawton and Council Member Leonard are talking about how to protect uh, their own district. And as a fellow council member, we would like to protect their own district and also the uh, community of the members. So for that, I, uh, as council member Leonard said, we are open to have a special meeting and have scrutinized this bill so everybody in this uh, body will understand pros and cons and what would be the best approach. So for that reason, I would like to, and 
besides, we cannot amend. So I would like to move this bill so we can continue our discussion and study. So I would like for your support to motion to table the motion. Councilman Elrod. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I would ask you to uh, not vote on the tabling motion. Um, I think quite simply, um, on planning bills, we've, we, uh, we quite often move them through on second reading and final uh, approval or discussion is reserved for third reading. This is a regular ordinance that very often it is on second reading that we do the bulk of the discussion. So I would ask that you do not vote to table this so that we continue the bulk of the discussion on second reading. This would significantly change how Metro, Davidson County, and Nashville approves, disapproves landfills, new landfills, or expansions of current landfills. And there were several attorneys in the committee room, and they were basically, they were all had different, um, I guess, arguments and by looking at the same law by looking at the same regulations, the same Metro code. This is going to be a complicated issue. I'm the second sponsor on the bill, and I'm not even sure how I'm going to vote on it, to be quite frankly. I'm, I'm a sponsor of the bill because I'm public works chairman. But this is a complicated issue that the more I dive into it, the more questions I have, and the more I worry about it, its impact. And I don't want to have to make those substantive discussions only on third reading. I would ask for you to vote no on the tabling motion so that we can then hopefully approve deferral after that. Thank you. Councilman Davis, they're only on a tabling motion, only the person making the motion and the prior moving party get to speak. So we'll come back to you after we vote on the motion to table. Madam Clerk, I'm just going to ask you to open the machine on this one. This is a motion to table the motion to defer. What that means is if you vote yes on the motion to table, we will move on to the bill as, it's, as it is um, currently drafted. If you vote no on the motion to table, we will then vote on the motion to defer. Madam Clerk. I have 11 for, 26 against. Motion fails. That brings us back to the motion to defer. Councilman Davis, anything further? I apologize, John Cooper, um, the lawyer John Cooper, picking on you. Um, I encourage you. I know this is confusing. I really feel for Councilman Roten and Councilman Leonardo. You know, in my district, if some remember some years back, we fought to keep a waste transfer station out. And it was very complicated. Thank you, John Cooper, for your help. And thank you, my fellow council members who are here. But we voted unanimously not to have this. So I feel for you. So however you need me to vote without harming Councilman Roten's, you know, I am with you, Nick, and so I'm with your community to make to make sure that we can get this done safely without causing any additional harm, because I personally feel that way, because dealing with this is hard and complicated, and I understand the risk that a judge may overthrow or overrule or something, and I'm not a lawyer, but I believe you have the best interests of your constituents in mind, and I don't want to see the Bordeaux dump expanded or anything done that you wouldn't want, and those constituents wouldn't want. Because I remember when they first put it in there in the, in the 80s or late 70s, you know, when that talk came up. So however you need us to vote, and I'm not a lawyer, I'm not a legal expert, but I want to support you to make sure, because I understand how, what you're going through right now. If anybody does, me and Councilman Roden, dealing with this, these kinds of issues in our neighborhoods. So please, if I'm a little bit slow, but help me help you get there with this. We're on the motion to defer. Councilor Lee Gilmore. Uh, thank you so much, Vice Mayor. I just uh, would like for uh, Council Mem Member Leonardo, if he could, just to speak uh, briefly to uh, his intention for the bill. Please excuse me, sitting. it's been a long night. So I was, if he could uh, just explain it quickly. Thank you. 
Thank you, Council Lady Gilmore. Um, the reason for this bill is that right now, uh, this is a bill that if it passes, this would give the council more oversight and more power to determine uh, if you know there's going to be an expansion or a new landfill placed in your district. Right now, if it's going to be a new landfill, it just it goes to the council via resolution and then to the BZA. And so there's really no requirement for any public hearing or anything like that. But the issue is if there's an expansion, uh, it doesn't even come before us. So the, the goal was to have more oversight and to have more notice to the public and have more public hearings so that we can ensure that you know the, the residents of District 1 have a voice. And that's what I was elected to do. Again, it's, it's one bad project after the next, and this is a good piece of state legislation, and it's the only way that we can come in and actually have a you know local input on this kind of legislation. Otherwise, if we were to take the portions that we liked and amid, uh, to uh, amend our zoning codes and the like, uh, it would be ruled, uh, it would be kind of an unconstitutional thing because it's preempted by state law. So again, this is the one piece of legislation the General Assembly has said to local municipalities, if you want control of your land, if you want control of these kinds of things, then you can vote uh, for this particular piece of legislation. There are actually eight considerations uh, that the council would have to undergo every time that they were looking at an expansion or a new landfill and with those considerations the reason that they are there and in place is because TDEC doesn't have those considerations. TDEC could care less frankly that's not their job and so again it gives more power to the uh, to the council and uh, it gives the people in a district like mine who've notoriously you know been dumped on with bad projects. I mean like I said tomorrow we're going to the state air quality board because they're trying to put a air uh, a, a gas pipeline through Jolton. That's something we've been working on for a while. So again this just gives uh, more of a voice to the residents of the district, and that was the only intent. It's just more checks and balances on this system. Thank you. Councilor Gilmore. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I look forward to uh, hearing more discussion and uh, supporting the council member in whatever way it's best that we can best help the community. I think it is a very important discussion, and I think sometimes depending on what district one may be from, they have a hard time relating if they've always had good developments uh, in their community. So I do think it is worthwhile. I, I did grow up in uh, the Bordeaux area, it's no secret, and the landfill was there for many, many years, and it hurts the community. It's environmentally unsound, and it's hard to bring uh, good developments over there. So I, I look forward to us having more discussion. I appreciate you bringing forth the solution. I don't know if this is the right one, but I, I do support you in that, and I hope that we continue to have more discussion and that it's not killed. It's worth, uh, worthy of having a good discussion. So I do stand in support, continue in this discussion, and I hope that other council members will afford you the same opportunity to protect your uh, community and, and to vet it and see how best we can help you. Thank you. Councilman Withers. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I absolutely support my colleague for trying to do what's best for his district. This is a very contentious uh, matter. There are a lot of matters to discuss. I, I can't, I just want to put it out there, I can't vote on this bill today having that many questions for myself, and I think we've heard some really good legal opinions from uh, Mr. Jamison and from some other attorneys on, on both sides of this issue, but with that amount of questioning uh, that we have and what the long-term implications are, and particularly with the de novo review, um, if, if this is called for a vote today, I would have to vote no, unfortunately, and so I'm hoping I'm hoping that the sponsors who have expressed an interest in having additional community meetings will do that and will go along with a deferral to let those discussions to take place before we do have a vote on second. Thank you. Councilman Hastings. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I would like to just stand and stand in support to both of my council members and also friends here uh, about the landfill issue. We do have to stand up for our constituents. That is not something that we want in our backyard. Me being a neighbor to District 1 and a Bordeaux a constituent, uh, able to understand that and the smell is not good it didn't feel good and we do not want it next door to us uh, we have to fix this issue uh, councilman Roden, I definitely understand his his concerns as well uh, we are in the midst of two really really big decisions and we have to come together to make those two one and I'm willing to stand up and support and help them to uh, come to a conclusion with this situation thank you Councilman Swap. Call the question. Previous question. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, that brings us to the motion to defer on uh, BL 2016-484. All in favor? 
Opposed? Motion carries. PL 2016-492, Councilman Mendez, amends the Metro Code pertaining to the short-term rental properties. Councilman Mendez. Committee reports, please. Councilman Coleman. I'm sorry, Councilman Swope. I knew that, I knew it, I knew it. Councilman Swope. After 492 has been through our committee, codes, fairs, and farmer's market for, I don't know, it seems like hundreds of times now, we are very happily approving it three, four, zero against. Council Lady Van Rees. Uh, the Convention's Tourism and Public Entertainment Facilities uh, voted to approve four in favor, zero against, with one abstention. Council Lady Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. As best I tell, the Planning, Zoning, and Historical voted for approval, nine in favor, one against, and I'm not sure what happened to the others. All right, thank you. Councilman Mendez. Move to approve. Motion approved. It's properly seconded. Councilman Cooper. Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Vice Mayor. I had a quick question for our, our sponsor for clarification. Um, given that there's a large volume of discussion about this, for 492, um, there's the commitment from the administration to hire codes enforcement, um, currently has an RFP for a contract. For them to enforce properly, they would, uh, my assumption is that 492 would, would show them what they're enforcing, in effect, that 492 would be necessary to be passed for the, for codes to accomplish its, 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 its enforcement in terms of definitions what's legal, the, the, the putting it in, in, into 17 itself? Uh, I think the short answer is yes. Um, uh, the longer answer isn't a lot different. Uh, <laughs> the, right, um, I think we're gonna need enforcement through somebody like host compliance, um, no matter what set of rules we have. Um, no matter what set of rules we have, um, we'll have an interest in um, finding who's operating without a permit. Um, we'll have an interest in finding who's not paying their taxes. And so we need the enforcement no matter what. And uh, yes, um, I think th there will be, uh, the ordinance is what will guide the enforcement. Council Lady Henderson. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, this is a, oh, pardon me, sir, sorry, I have to stand. Um, this is a bill about which I have many constituents who are concerned and, and still have questions. And so there are questions that I have asked in previous committees um, that I just thought would be helpful uh, to the community for this to be um, on the record um, as to the potential future effect um, if this were to be passed. Um, I'm a co-sponsor of 608, um, which is a phase-out bill for STRP. I know we're looking at several moratoriums and all three of those bills are predicated on the passage of 492, um, but I do feel like there are lingering concerns despite um, previous questions uh, about whether uh, the passage of 492 could potentially preclude or thwart um, those, those future bills. And so, Mr. Jamison, I wonder if you could just speak on the, um, this moving into Title 17 and the clarifying language and um, your, your thinking on that, please, for the record. Sure. Um, 492, um, as one of your colleagues said earlier today, does absolutely nothing to, to change the substantive regulations of what has been before this body for the past year and several months. It moves what was in Title VI into Title 17 and tweaks the four definitions that were the source of the um, Judge Jones ruling um, a few months ago. The concerns expressed about whether or not passage of 492 would create some sort of vested property right, in my opinion, do not do that because the Vested Property Act requires approval of essentially a final site plan. That is not the workup to an STRP. It's considered now an accessory use. And if the uh, vesting occurred, it would be in a permit that lasts a year. Um, none of the moratoriums are shorter than a year, uh, and the phase out obviously goes beyond the one year period. So short answer is, I don't believe passage of 492 creates any unintended consequences in terms of what this council can later undo should it decide in the course of 608, 609, and 610. Okay, thank you, Mr. Jameson. Mr. Cooper um, with Metro Legal, do you concur? 100%. 
Ms. Logan with Metro Planning, do you concur? Yes, we do. Thank you. Councilman Coleman. Thank you, uh, Mr. Vice Mayor. I want to go back to uh, Councilman Cooper's uh, question and response. He asked the question whether or not uh, the hiring of the seven uh, employees, inspectors, that the codes uh, analysis report that came back to us. And in that, Councilman Mendez said it would. Well, I disagree because I think it's two different subjects. One, yes, we need the seven new employees for the inspection as we stand today with STR. But 492 doesn't have anything to do with that report that we received. First of all, there need to be appropriation for seven new employees. The report that we got back from the consultants is our only recommendations. It's only when this council decide that uh, the appropriation should be put into funding will 492 and the rest of the STR bills match up with enforcement. So I don't think that's completely accurate. Now, in codes committee, um, I did. I guess I wasn't recorded properly because I voted to abstain. And uh, Councilman Swope said the vote was 3-0. Well, I beg the difference, it was 3-0-1, I abstained. And the Planning Commission, I voted against it. The reason why is because I've often said that 492 is going to be confused with the other three bills. So for that reason, I thought we should take them all up in one breath. Why the committee thought otherwise, they thought that 492 should pass so that we would have something to amend when the other three bills come about. I don't necessarily agree with that because I think it sends confusing messages to the public. I think council may be confused because when we take these bills and piecemeal them, we're gonna come back to the question as, what are we gonna do and how we're going to get it enforced? So it's for that reason I've been holding out with the position. I think 492 in this concept is really good. I think Councilman Mendez is extremely hard, but I think the way we're piecemealing it is gonna cause more confusion in the long run, just as it did tonight. And one big misstatement, so to speak, is whether or not the seven inspectors will help us out in 492. I beg the difference. And until we get the inspectors, only then can we tell. Not only are the inspectors important for STR, but for code inspections across the city because there are other properties that are in need of inspection and yet we don't have the manpower to do so. So I want this council to be fully aware of what we're talking about and not confuse the consultant's report with 492 or with the other bills coming up. The fact that we may vote, the fact that we probably will approve funding has yet not come. So as a direct result of that, I think it should be clear, we're not talking about enforcement. That comes at a later date. What we're talking about right now is whether or not 492 will correct all the errors, make the rulings as Director Jamison said, a little bit easier in terms of the judge interpretation. But surely 492 won't be the end all be all to short term rental. So having expressed that, um, I support the measure um, in a, in a way that I want to keep our council moving forward, but please don't misunderstand the consultant's report in terms of being something that would assist us with 492. Thank you. Councilman Swope, did you want to clarify your report? I do, my apologies. My apologies to you, Mr. President. My apologies to Councilman Coleman. Um, Codes Fairs Farmers Market voted four, three, four, zero against with one it's abstention. Thank you, Councilman. Council Lady Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. And as a, a co-sponsor of this, I, I do want to um, respond to some of the comments that have that come before. Um, first of all, I would say this this is not piecemeal. This is simply a restatement of a number of bills that were passed last summer, um, and that by moving it into Section 17, we are opening up the opportunity for public comment um, and public hearings every step of the way, which currently was not the case when it was in Section 6. Um, and that was a decision that was made several years ago based on good reasoning at the time, but we're learning as we go along. Uh, I agree that this is not the end all and be all and no one thinks that it is. Um, but again, this bill does not introduce anything new except for a definition that we feel like we need 
um, to get us out of sort of a, a legal limbo that it's not necessarily a good place to be in. And, and clearly there are new, um, new bills coming up that assume that the, this, this uh, set of section numbers are in place and they will go through more smoothly if we go ahead and pass this. Um, and again, there are, no, there are no new regulations here. It's, it's all regulations that we worked through and worked very hard on to come up with last summer based on comment from public meetings that were held then. So I would ask for people's support to go ahead and move these through and then we can give our full attention to the other bills that have just been introduced on first read tonight. Thank you. Lady Mina Johnson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, at the Planning Zoning Committee yesterday, we had a very lively discussion and uh, several of us asked, by passing 492, uh, are we creating a vested uh, option? And we established uh, there isn't, uh, it, it won't. And also uh, at the discussion, we are introducing several bills uh, for the first reason we, we just passed. So why not directly go into that bills instead of passing? That was a question. And so I would like to retaliate the reason we should not, or rather could not go into the fast reading bill, but uh, mechanism, uh, like a methodically, we have to pass 492. So if you would uh, explain to the viewing audience and the people behind it, so we, uh, they will know why some of the council members reluctantly supporting this 492. The, I think the primary reason that 492, um, the, the benefit of it going first and, and in fact passing is that 608, 609, and 610 are all drafted referring to the section numbers that 492 creates. Um, and disrupting that would I think mean essentially withdrawing those three bills or at least substantially substituting them um, so that we've got a mechanism going forward. At the joint committee meeting that was held um, on 492 and codes enforcement thereof, the uh, uh, general demeanor of the committees was that 492 should pass with the additional uh, recommendations that uh, eventually took, in the, took the form of 608, 609, and 610. Council Lady Rocher. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, so I just want to make sure that I'm clear. I was one of the ones that reluctantly supported 492 in committee yesterday. Um, and we did have um, a very thorough, lively discussion as it relates uh, to this bill. Just, just for my understanding and, and the viewing audience's understanding as it relates to 492, we're moving the definitions from Title VI into Title 17 for the purpose of public comment. My question would be, is there any other way that we could have that to happen and still just define um, STRPs in Title VI without moving it to Title 17? There is no mechanism in Title VI for it to go before the Planning Commission. Should, be a, should it be amended from this point forward? Should there be additional ordinances that change that title? It automatically goes to the Planning Commission. It automatically comes before this body on a full public hearing, three reading ordinance. That is not necessarily the case if it were codified as it is today in Title VI. Pursuant to the rule change adopted in January, there is one abstention. Madam Clerk, will you open the machine? Approval. Voting on bill on second reading. 492. Madam Clerk. I have 33-4, one, one against, one abstention. Motion carries. Bill 2016-496. Councilman Bednay, Council Lady Allen approves the met, amends the Metro Code to prohibit non-electric vehicles from parking and electric vehicle charging stations. Councilman Bednay. Uh, Vice Mayor, uh, we refer this to the 
uh, Traffic and Parking Commission, do we need to have a report, an update from them? It wasn't a mandatory thing, it's just something with this because we are nice people. Debatable. Anyway, they were okay with it. We do not have a, I do not have a report on the agenda. So um, if you attended that meeting, you might to give a, a report and then we'll move on. I was told that they uh, endorsed, that they thought it was uh, a swell idea, <laughs> quoting Councilman Freeman. Uh, and I'm uh, asking for your support on this legislation. Today, when I drove into the council in the parking lot, there was a car parked on the electric station that wasn't an electric car. So this is happening even in this building tonight where vehicles are parked where they are not supposed to park, taking away uh, the spots where people that made the investment of buying an electric vehicle uh, are maybe discouraged from taking the chance of driving downtown because they may not find a place to park their vehicle and charge it. So I'm asking for your support on this legislation. And I wanted to take this opportunity to say hi to my wife that came to visit. The motion to approve, it's properly seconded. Seems like we got a lot of discussion about this bill on second reading. Council Lady Murphy. I couldn't remember and I'm trying to quickly check the analysis. Is this applying to public and private um, garages and parking spaces? Yes. Yes. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, as someone who is uh, drives a, an electric vehicle regularly, I certainly encounter this issue. Um, one of the things that I was concerned about when this bill came to Public Works Committee, though, was that we already have protection in the Metro Code for if signage is posted at electric vehicle facilities, uh, citations can be issued. In fact, in the garage at Public Square, uh, the appropriate signage is already in place. I think what Councilman Bedney was looking to do was actually to extend that protection. I was concerned that this would actually create one of those scenarios where you'd have to know intricacies of the Metro Code to avoid uh, getting a parking citation, for instance. Uh, you know, and my concern was based in the scenario of small businesses, right? My place of employment recently added electric vehicle facility. They do not have a sign. It's nice if people can park there, but I think if, if you're constrained by number of spaces available at a commercial area, uh, or if there is limited on-street parking and those kinds of scenarios, I didn't want to open the door for those businesses that are offering this as an amenity, but not necessarily a required amenity uh, with the constraints of, say, parking for people uh, with, with disabilities, that kind of thing. Um, and fortunately, we've had very vigorous discussion about this. Uh, Councilman Elrod, the chair of the committee brought a number of amendments that I think would mitigate my concerns effectively. I, I still think the code offers a lot of protection, but I think with the, uh, the, the amendments in place, this bill uh, should work on a, a you know, fewer surprises basis, so I'm, I'm inclined to support it at this point. But I wanted people to understand the, the history that got us to this point. Thank you. Councilman Swap. I I, do, was I supposed to move the amendment? I mean, I... I'm not aware of an amendment, sir. It's already been amended. I think it was previously amended. Okay, sorry about that. It's motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. BL 2016-525, Councilman Schulman amends the Metro Code to require the Metro Police Department to provide reports of positive engagements with the community to the Metro Council. Councilman Schulman. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor, members of the council. The committee report is already in. I would move this bill um, um, for approval on second reading with a brief explanation. Floor All right, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. So um, this is the bill that deals with uh, reporting, uh, the police reporting uh, positive engagements with the community. This bill um, was brought with um, uh, good, all good intentions. Um, I think I said last meeting that it's a way of promoting community policing, which we think is a very good thing. Um, it's obviously very clear that our police do very good things in our community. 
Um, everything from community meetings to coffees to going to schools. I think I saw something the other day. Uh, I believe it was in our area where um, a police officer was playing basketball with kids. Uh, those are very, very good things that make this community what it is. Uh, all this bill simply does is uh, it provides that the police are going to give us a report of those good things for us. And with that, I would move approval. Councilman Mendez. I'd like to support Councilman Shulman on this. You know, la last night um, as I was preparing for um, today's meeting and reflecting on the um, really just tragic um, circumstances regarding Officer Muma and the memorial service and, and seeing um, literally dozens of police officers moved to tears, our own colleagues um, clearly fighting to hold their emotions in check um, from having lost uh, one of their, their brothers on the police force. Um, I, I became even more convinced that, that this, is, this is the right thing to do. Um, our police officers are engaged constantly with the public um, in positive, wonderful ways. And, and you can find out about that if you go to the weekly ComStat meetings that the police department holds. But beyond that, um, there just really isn't a good way to learn about all the wonderful things that Officer Muma and um, other police officers do every single day in our community. Um, this bill, from my perspective, is a statement of the council um, that it's uh, valuable for the entire community to stand behind the police department in um, sharing what it is that the police department does for us day in, day out, week in, week out. And I think it, it's, a, it's a tribute to our department to be able to say that we believe so strongly in what they're doing for community engagement that we're willing to memorialize it in a statute to make it a requirement so everybody knows um, all the great things that our police department does. So I, I think, um, thank you, Councilman Shulman, for bringing this. I think it's a good bill. Councilman Pardue. My problem with this bill is is not the good intention. I, I'm I'm not fighting the fact that it's the good intention. However, it's just the fact of having legislation requiring it. It's already there. Uh, Comstat meetings, station Comstat meetings. Closer. It's on? Okay. I'm a, I'm a low talker. I apologize. But, uh, and, uh, and I even talked to them today and was told that they did the form that this legislation requires two months ago and is willing to give it to everybody. I don't understand why we got to legislate and make the police department tell us every damn thing they do that's good when all you got to do is turn TV on to see that they're doing good. They've always done good. The Comstat meetings is not something that started when, when we started raising Kane about them not doing stuff that satisfied us. That's been going on since Chief Surpass came here. It's not a secret. Nothing they do is a secret. I don't understand why we have to tell them that every four months they got to send a report to public safety, which is me, that I don't want. Uh, first off, if, and if they want to send everything that's asked for, everything that they've done that's, that's good, every time they shake hands with somebody on the street and speak to them, they're going to have to do a report on that and send it to me. I don't want it. So it's, it's up to whatever y'all want to do. It, it, it don't matter. They, uh, they're trying to give us the reports that we asked for, but we're going to legislate that they do. So. I, I, I can't vote for this. That's Councilman Pridemore. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. And I, too, uh, I, I, my, my questions or my statement is this. If, if it's such, if it's wanting to show how well and how good the police department and all the good things they're doing, why isn't the police department in favor of this? There obviously there's some issues that, that, that of concern on they are providing the information in our in the public safety committee meeting. It was it was uh, um, disapproved. Uh, I want to make sure it's clear on that because 
we vetted it and it just didn't seem to come to muster as to why uh, certain questions weren't uh, answered. Uh, also, I'm not going to be, I was going to talk about redundancy, but I'd hate to do that if I'm talking, repeat what <laughs> Councilman uh, stated. So I'm going to go into a couple other things that was in, a, in uh, Mr. Jamison's analysis. And, and that is, it, uh, there's a, a statement there that says, but would not be limited to a listing of those community events and activities that the MMPD were involved in. Well, I, what does that mean? I mean, and I'm not criticizing what I'm, I'm saying, the police department is saying, what does that mean? They don't know what that means. So I go back to, I guarantee you, if I'm doing something good, and I'm in, and I'm in charge of the police department and in charge of public relations. I guarantee you, I'd want you to know. But there's some reason, there's some questions that have not been answered, and because of that, they don't want to. They're, they're already providing the information that they're seeking. Now, now they're not providing another report, but the information is provided every Friday morning at North Precinct. Also. If you want to get down, if you're into the money issue of it, which we all should be, the fiscal report says there will be an increase in administrative costs by the police department for uh, creating these reports. So you know if there's going to be a, uh, an increase in the fiscal, in the uh, preparing of these reports, it's going to take more manpower from the police while we're off the street or doing other duties to file a report that they already have there. I, 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 did, I did go with redundancy. Thank you. Councilor yes, Dow. Uh, thank you. I just want to say that um, I'm one of the frequent requesters of data from the Metropolitan Police Department. I've never had an issue getting any kind of information with them. I think it's in poor, um, I think we're treading on a, a very um, slippery slope when we start um, asking people by legislation for specific pieces of data. Um, my concern with this is that, you know, councilmen um, who drafted the legislation did not go meet with the community advisors to talk with them about what they're currently disseminating to the community, um, establish a template for what they want to see. We have not funded the police department for a uh, FTE to provide this data on a regular basis, and we've not also funded them with a, a computer system to track this information. I, I, I'm... Um, from out in the Metro South precinct. And we have a good relationship with our uh, precinct. I get any kind of information I want. In fact, I've shared several different reports with the councilman. If there is a specific format that you want across the board, some metrics that you all agree on, put those metrics on a piece of paper, send it over there to them and ask them, can they all uh, come up and present these? But I'm personally not interested in how many community meetings Sergeant Fernandez go to because I see the pictures on the Facebook site. I see it on Twitter. Uh, I see it on the email distribution list that everybody out in our community can sign up on and get emails from frequently. What I'm interested in the police do doing in my area is protecting the safety of our constituents. I'm interested in seeing them out on the street patrolling, stopping speeders. We had six people killed in my district in the last week. Now you may have time in your districts to uh, pass out reports about how many potlucks your police officers have been to or how many community meetings and all of that. We already know because we see them there. And there's nobody in this city who should have any concerns about whether our police are out and engaged in the community because they're there. The neighbors can come out and they will see them. They're everywhere. We have several meetings in my community and I, could, I cannot say uh, one time that we did not have at least one or two police officers there. And so they are visible, and I think they're doing what we're asking them to do. I think the community, we need to work on some parts that we can do to uh, aid our police department. I don't think it's a good idea for us to be adding for extra work for them to do. Now, if one of us want to get together and put together a template, work with our IT department and send it over there and ask for that information, I think that's a good idea. But I don't think it's a good idea to legislate a required report. What are you going to do with the information when you get it? When we get this report every quarter with all the other data and information we get, what do we do with it? And how is it going to improve uh, things in our community? I get a report in March. It said he went to 12 community meetings. So what? 
You know, how many cars were stopped for speeding? How many lives were saved? How quick did you arrive on a call for service? That's what we're interested in, and that's what they're reporting on all the uh, things. So I just think this is uh, pointless. I don't know um, what it is about uh, this council and committee that uh, with all these reports, um, because unless you can convey to me what you're going to do with it, uh, people in my community, they don't care about a report. We, we send them five, six, seven of them. So they don't care what they do care about is seeing police out patrolling, stopping speeders in our community, uh, making sure that when they call that they're there. Um, you know, Officer Muma is a uh, wonderful example of what we already know for our police department because we are high and frequent users of it out in Metro South. So, so we know these things. I just think that uh, I would ask the council members to um, vote no on this. Uh, let's partner and work with our police department. Um, all of our community liaisons, and I've reached out after we had our meeting with uh, um, several different ones, and they said, we'll be happy. If y'all come up with some things you want to see, we'll be happy to, we can all get together and have a template um, and do that. But if we're going to ask for this, let's fund them with a person, let's fund them with a uh, computer system, and let's fund them with uh, the ability to put this out and not just legislate extra work on them. Thank you. Council Lady Mina Johnson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, I just want to ask a uh, sponsor of the bill, uh, the statement from uh, Council Member uh, Pratmore says, uh, police uh, department are not for it. Could you give us, if they have any position on this uh, rather fuzzy request or not? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. So uh, in response to the council lady's question, I'm not sure what the fuzzy request is. I will tell you that, um, um, you know, when we started this, um, again, this is really, this is supposed to be really positive. This is all about community policing. This is what nationally we are being told that we should do. This is all about um, finding those things that are really good. Um, so I did reach out to the chief before I ever filed the legislation to let him know what I was doing. And um, um, I, I'm trying to be careful. I mean, this, this city has been through a lot in the last week, and, and I don't want to say anything bad. I mean, we, um, we all are together in terms of doing this. This is a positive thing. This is to recognize the good. Um, the police have, um, when, I, when I did talk to the police, they, they have not told me they, that they were against the bill. Um, they have a format. They can do it. Um, obviously, people can can say that they've talked to other people, but I haven't heard. They, nobody's come to me and said they they are against it. Uh, they can provide it. I just think it's a good idea that we recognize all the good things that that the police do. Um, this really is. Um, I, I'm, you know, the timing is bad, and I understand all that stuff. Um, but this was meant to do something good. This is a this is a good thing for all of us. And um, we have lots of reports in the code that we require. This is just asking them to give us the good things so we can, we can learn from it. Um, and we can praise all those things and we can go forward as a city. We're trying to be together on all these things. So I don't know if that answered the question, um, but nobody's come to me from the police department and told me that they do not like the bill. Councilman Sledge. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. And while I, I do not question the sponsor's intentions on this bill, I have to echo the concerns that Council Lady Dow raised. In addition to sharing the South Precinct with her, I, I also uh, most of District 17 is in Midtown Hills Precinct. And I can tell you that that is not a precinct. It is a community center. I mean, it, there are meetings every night of the week over there, and it is because the community trusts in it. And the last thing that I want to do to Sergeant Jones over there is have her producing extra reports based on everything that's happening over there, because I think the only person who goes to more meetings in this district is Sergeant Jones, um, I mean, because she is at everything. And I worry that this gets expanded and extended, as some other council members have said, and I just don't see the point. I'd rather have Sergeant Jones at an Edge Hill community meeting instead of behind a computer doing this report. So I would ask my colleagues to vote no on this bill. Councilman Kendall. I want to uh, 
thank Councilman Schumann for this uh, piece of legislation. I, I think it's a good idea. And it's not just, we're not just talking about what's helping the police department. I think we're talking about community relations here. We're talking about communities understanding what policemen do other than arrest people, stop cars, and that kind of thing. Uh, in the community I live in and grew up in, there's pretty much a negative connotation about what policemen do because they don't see every day and they don't go necessarily to all of these meetings that we're talking about. But if this information is just gonna be used for us to put in our folders and say we know what's going on, then it may not be worthwhile. But if it's used for the purpose of promoting the good things that the police department does, and we got a Tennessean right over here, and we got other writers around the, the city, who, who, if we could share that with them, those are the kinds of things I think would, would help the community understand that policemen do more than arrest people and put people in jail. Because you know, I think it's a good thing if, if, it's, if it's used for those purposes, for community uh, engagement and community trust and those kind of things, I think it's, it's a great idea. I don't know what the cost is. I can't see it being a significant cost to put out a report. And you're not talking about reporting every little thing that would be like shaking hands with somebody. I don't think that's what we're talking about. I think we're talking about if a police officer, I, well, I heard a chaplain tonight talk about uh, Officer Mumau, that he had done several he he heroic things that they didn't even know about that he didn't even know about. These are the kinds of things I think will help the community understand that the police off, police department does good things in the community. So I support it. I have nine people to speak. I'm, I'm 10. Um, I'm, if you've spoken once, you're, I'm putting you at the bottom of the line. I'm letting people who haven't spoken yet go first. So just so you know, if it looks like you're waiting, you are. Councilman Coleman. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, <clears throat> arise tonight on both sides of the coin. I had a chance to speak with the FOP president last week, and he revealed some of the same things I've heard uh, from Councilman Schulman, Councilman Mendez. But on the other hand, I understand Council Lady Dow's point. So I rise to offer a friendly uh, amendment, well, not amendment, but motion to the sponsor to allow us to defer this for two meetings. Uh, let us get the chief in with some other authority to see if this is something that really uh, can be worked out so both sides of the issue can be discussed fully. It doesn't take but one bad shooting before we get a Ferguson. It doesn't take but one bad incident before our town will be rough like some other town. So the more we can do to prevent that, the better we are. But on the other hand, I do understand tasking an agency with more work. So based on that, um, I'm not going to make the motion, but I will yield the balance of my time to the sponsor, uh, Councilman Schulman, if he will accept the idea of deferring it for two weeks, get the proper people before this council, and let's talk about it when a week that is not so stressful as the one that we're in. So having said that, I yield the balance of my time to Councilman Schulman. Um, thank you, and thank you to the councilman. Um, just real quick, um, this is supposed to be a good thing. This is what we've been told nationally we should be doing, community policing. Um, easy to do. Um, the police have told me that they can do the reports. This is how we find out all the good things that are going on, and then if there are other things that we can come up with, other good ideas, wonderful. Um, this is, this is a good thing. It's not meant to be anything bad. It is meant to be really positive for our community. But obviously there's concerns out there. Um, and so in the interest of, um, in the interest of, of, of just being professional and being civil and with all the things that have gone on in the city for the past week, uh, I'm going to go ahead and move to defer. It's a, it's, this is the third deferral, so it'll go put on the desk, and then we'll see if we can come up with some solution. But please be assured that this was, um, this was something good for this city, good for the police, good for all of us. It helps all of us. 
but I will, um, in the interest of this meeting and in the interest of the city, I'm going to move to defer. Um, so it'll go a deferral indefinitely. Motion to defer, which results in an indefinite deferral. Is there a second? I still have seven people here if you still want to speak. I'm giving you a chance now to take your name off the list. <laughs> Council Lady Karen Johnson. On the, long on the motion to defer. Hit. Yes, this is on the motion to defer. So you're going to speak either yes, in favor I am. or yeah. in opposition to Vice the motion Mayor. to defer, correct? <laughs> I, I will be in support of a deferral because I think where some of the concerns from talking with officers is that they already have a considerable amount of paperwork that they have to do. This adds something additional for our officers to have to do. And I think when it's a have to, that's where we get into kind of a a gray area where um, it may become a little bit problematic for our officers. So I'm asking the sponsor to, um, like other council members have said, to meet again with the chief and the FOP president and um, our top ranking officers and to see if there is a way that we can minimize the paperwork that would be required from our officers. Um, but I think overall it is positive. Um, I just don't want it to be an undue hardship on our officers because they have so much work they have to do already. Thank you. Councilman Pardew. There's only one other speaker, and I'm going to I'm going to overrule your motion to I'm going to give it to Council Lady Gilmore for a brief comment. Then we're going to vote. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, I appreciate it. I was listening uh, to the discussion, and I appreciate uh, just um, Council Member Schulman's. He's very uh, diplomatic. Um, I was just listening to everyone, though, and they were saying on the floor that they didn't want it to be burdens burdensome for the police officers, but if they've already agreed to do it, I don't understand how the paperwork could be burdensome, but I'm glad that he w withdrew, but they said that they would agree to do it, so I just look at look at it a way as it being um, memorial, I mean, be, just because official part, because after we leave, I think sometimes the concern is they're doing it, but just and it doesn't even have to be the police officers. We make certain laws, though, even after we pass, after after we leave office, so that it's still done. You know, sometimes things may stop, they may continue on, they may stop, but if it becomes a part of the actual requirement, it just continues on. And so that's all I wanted to say, and I just appreciated um, you being very diplomatic. You, you pulled it, but um, the fact that they said that they were willing to submit it, I think that it could possibly you know, be, but there's opportunities for discussion. So thank you. This motion Vice to defer Mayor. is properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. BL 2016-516, Councilman Mendez amends the Metro Code regarding exemptions of items con constituting anything of value and amending section 2.222.030 regarding annual benefit reporting statements disclosures. Councilman Mendez. Committee report, please. Councilman Cooper. Finance met and voted 13 4 0 against. Councilman Mendez. Move to approve with Motion a brief approve. explanation. Floor is yours. Um, this, uh, there, there were two basically uh, typos in the ethics ordinance that um, there were references to other code sections that didn't go anywhere, and so this uh, uh, corrects that. That's all it does. Motion to approve, properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-561, Council Lee Murphy and Allen amends the Metro Code regarding prohibited locations for stopping st uh, standing and parking vehicles. Council Lady Murphy. Committee reports, please. Councilman Swope. Codes Ferris and Farmers Market passed 2017-561-440 uh, against. Councilman Pardew. 561. 561 passed public safety 70. Councilor Lady Murphy. 
Um, I'd like to move for approval with a brief explanation. Um, thank you. I will not be able to be here at the next meeting, um, so I wanted to go ahead and explain where this bill came from. It came from a constituent um, who was concerned about the visibility and the safety of pedestrians and vehicular traffic when this is um, happening, as well as destroying our planting um, and grass buffers. I was not uh, able to print out for you all, but I have emailed you um, a series of pictures of some bad parking jobs and myself not being a good driver. I will probably guilty of this at some point. So um, I ask for your uh, support and um, approval of this bill tonight and um, on third reading in two weeks. Thank you. Thank you, Council Lady. Uh, your motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries BL 2017-562. Councilman Cooper Allen and others approves an amendment to the lease agreement between Metro Government and Stephen M. Minton and Elaine Minton. Councilman Cooper. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance uh, met and approved 13-0, and I would request the other committee reports. Councilman Pardew. Pass public safety 7-0. Council Lady Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, Planning Zone Historical Record approval 13 in favor, 0 against. Councilman Cooper. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Move for approval. Motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-563, Councilman Elrod adopts the revised flood insurance rate map to minimize dangers to life and property due to flooding and to maintain el eligibility for participation in the National Flood Insurance Program. Council Lady, uh, uh, Councilman Elrod, sorry. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, with uh, Public Works recommended for approval, 11 in favor, zero against. I move approval. Council Lady Allen. Thank you. Planning Zoning Historical recommend approval, 13 in favor, zero against. Councilman Elrod. Sorry, I didn't have, uh, sorry, Council. That's all right. I didn't have Roll planning on. down. Move approval. Motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-564. Councilman Cooper, Councilman Elrod authorizes Metro Government to accept a donation of $25,000 from Craighead Development, LLC, for the construction of intersection improvements at State Route 171, Hobson Pike, and Pinhook Road. Councilman Cooper. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance met and approved 13-4-0 against call for committee reports. Councilman Elrod. Public Works recommend for approval, 11 in favor, 0 against. Councilman and Cooper. Move for approval. Motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-565, Dow Cooper and others, approves a participation agreement between Metro Government and Century Farms, LLC, for the construction of public infrastructure, infrastructure improvements. Council Lady Dowell. Thank you. All committee reports are in. No, they're not committee reports. Councilman Cooper. I'm so sorry. Budget and Finance voted 13-4-0 against. Council Lady Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning, zoning, historical, recommended approval, 13 in favor, zero against. Councilman Elrod. Public Works recommended for approval, 11 in favor, zero against. Council Lady Dow. Thank you. I move for approval. Motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-566. Councilman Scott Davis, Elrod, and Allen abandons an existing sewer main and any associated easements and accepts a new sewer main water main and associated easements and main manholes for properties located at 306B, 306, 402, 408, 500, and 0 Cowan Street. Councilman Scott Davis. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Council Lady Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning, zoning, historical, recommended approval, 13 in favor, 0 against. Councilman Elrod. Public Works recommend for approval, 11 in favor, 0 against. Councilman Scott Davis. Like the move for approval, please. Motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-567. Council Lady Henderson, Elrod, and Allen abandons an existing 10-foot wide public easement, public utility easement for property located at 629 Bell Park Circle. Council Lady Henderson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Council Lady Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning, zoning, historical, recommended approval, 13 in favor, zero against. Councilman Elrod. Public Works recommend for approval, 11 in favor, zero against. Lady Henderson. Thank you, I would move approval. Motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-568, Councilman Kendall, Elrod, and Allen abandons an existing sanitary sewer main and easement and accepts a new sanitary sewer main and easement and sanitary sewer manholes and properties located at four properties located at 415 27th Avenue North and 512 26th Avenue North. Councilman Elrod. 
Committee reports, please. Councilor Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning, zoning, historical recommended approval. 13 in favor, zero against. Councilman Elrod. Public works recommend for approval. 11 in favor, zero against. Move to approve. Motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-569, Councilman O'Connell, Allen, and Elrod abandons an existing sewer main and easements and accepts a new sewer main, manholes, and easement for property located at 112, 114, and 118 17th Avenue North. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Councilman, uh, Council Lady Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning, zoning, historical, recommended approval, 13 in favor, zero against. Councilman Elrod. Public works recommend for approval, 11 in favor, zero against. Thank you, Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to move approval, please. Motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-570, Councilman Elrod and Allen accepts permanent and temporary easements for the Shady Tree Lane Stormwater Improvement Project for 10 properties located along Shady Tree Lane, Apple Orchard Trail, and Mount View Road. Councilman Elrod. Thank you, Mr. President. Committee reports, please. Councilor Lee Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning, zoning, historical, recommended approval, 13 in favor, zero against. Councilman Elrod. Public works recommend for approval, 11 in favor, zero against. Move to approve. Councilman, this motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-571, Freeman, Elrod, and Allen accepts permanent and temporary easements for the Collier Avenue Stormwater Improvement Project for 10 properties located along Collier Avenue and Tanksley Avenue. Councilman Freeman. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Council Lady Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning, zoning, historical, recommended approval, 13 in favor, zero against. Councilman Elrod. Public works recommended for approval, 11 in favor, zero against. Councilman Freeman. Uh, move for approval. Motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-572, Councilman Elrod and Allen adopts the Geographic Information System Street and Alley Centerline layer with the recordation of, re uh, of renaming additions and deletions of acceptance and abandonments as, reflect as reflected as the official street and alley acceptance and maintenance record. Councilman Elrod. Committee reports, please. Councilman Lee Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning, zoning, and historical. Recommended approval, 13 in favor, zero against. Councilman Elrod. Public works recommend for approval, 11 in favor, zero against. Move to approve. Motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-573, Councilman um, Elrod and Allen changes the name of Avalon Drive to Avalon Lane. Councilman Elrod. Committee reports, please. Councilor Lee Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning, zoning, historical, recommended approval, 13 in favor, zero against. Councilman Potts. Traffic and parking votes approved, 7 4, zero against. Councilman, Councilman Elrod. Public works recommend for approval, 11 in favor, zero against. Move to approve. Motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017 574. Um, Councilman El Elrod and Allen abandons overall street right of way overall street right of way and easement. Councilman Elrod. Committee reports, please. Council Lady Allen. I just want to clarify, that's not overall street, it's a specific street called overall. I think that's important. I know. That's and therefore, good. planning, zoning, yeah. historical, recommended 13 in favor and zero against. That's why I read it twice. Councilman Potts. Traffic and parking vote approved 7 4 zero against. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Elrod. We're going to have to totally redo the Public Works Committee because I thought we were abandoning all streets and right of ways. The uh, Public Works recommend for approval, 11 in favor, zero against, move to approve. <laughs> Motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2016 297, Council Lady Dowell changes from RM20 to RS15, zoning for property located at Hickory Hollow Parkway, unnumbered west side of Hickory Hollow Parkway. Council Lady Dowell. Committee Here. reports. Council Lee Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. At the request of the sponsor, Planning Zoning Historical uh, recommended an indefinite deferral, 13 in favor, zero against. Motion to defer indefinite. I'm sorry. <laughs> Council Lee Dowell. I'm going to um, move this to defer indefinitely, and I will bring back some other legislation for this. I'm happy to say that I was able to work with the uh, developer and come up with a better option for this parcel of property, so move to defer indefinitely. Motion to defer indefinitely is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2016-497, Councilman Sledge 
and Men's Metro Code to provide guidance for placement of handicapped parking spaces on public streets outside residential properties. Councilman Sledge. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. With all committee reports in, I move for approval. Motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? Motion carries. BL 2016-500, Council Lady Karen Johnson, Cooper, and others authorizes the acquisition of certain easements and property rights for use in public properties for the purposes of the Willow Branch uh, Drive sidewalk improvements. Council Lady Karen Johnson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to move to defer one meeting. Motion to defer one meeting. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. You're welcome. BL 2016-520, Council Lady Murphy. Changes 0 .70 acres from CS to SP zoning for properties located on 4305 and 307 Alabama Avenue to permit an office slash retail space and self-storage. Council Lady Murphy. Reports, please. Council Lady Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Planning Zoning Historical recommended approval of the bill as amended, 13 in favor, zero against. Council Lady? I would like to move the amendment. There's a motion to amend. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. You're on your bill as amended. I'd like to move the bill as amended. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2016-526. Councilman Shulman, amends the Metro Code regarding confidential information. Uh, Councilman Shulman. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. All committee reports are in. I would move for passage. Motion to approve. Properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2016-5. Now, I guess I, I did not acknowledge that we were on bills on third reading, but... Uh, wait. Am I missing a page? I did not acknowledge it, but we are, we have been on third reading here for a while. I know you guys are disappointed. Yeah, right. BL 2016-531, Councilman O'Connell, Allen, and Elrod changed the name of, uh, of Lifeway Plaza to J.M. Frost Plaza. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to move approval. Motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2016-532, Councilman O'Connell, Allen, and Alrod changed the name of a portion of Joe Johnston Avenue to Lifeway Plaza. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. After we got back uh, some analysis from Metro Historic uh, and in ongoing discussions with the applicant, uh, this one has some unusual uh, history associated with the name Joe Johnston uh, that is still in discussion. After further discussion with the applicant, I'd like to see if we could move to defer this for two meetings, please. Motion to defer two meetings. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2016-533, Councilman Withers, Allen, and Elrod changed the name of a portion of Boscoville Street to North 6th Street. Councilman Withers. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. With all committee reports in, I would like to move approval. Motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-541. Council Lady Karen Johnson, Bedney, and Allen amends the Metro Code regarding the appointment of special advisory committees for persons to serve as administrative hearing officers. Council Lady Karen Johnson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I move for approval. It's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Councilman Withers. We're <laughs> I don't know. All right, BL 2000. BL 2000. Councilman Withers, are you seeking recognition on the prior one or on the next one? Okay, BL 2017-542, Councilman O'Connell, Sledge, and others amends the Metro Code to require contracts for correctional facility management services to be approved by the Metro Council and to include a requirement that, that reports be submitted to the Metro Council regarding contractor performance. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. Rice. Hang with like, me, guys. Hang with me. I'd like to move approval with a brief comment, please. Motion to approve. Properly seconded, the floor is yours. 
I'd just like to thank the sheriff's office for their assistance with the, this bill in particular, including their uh, willingness and readiness to offer appropriate reporting, uh, much of which they've asserted is, is generally available. Um, and so again, my, my commendations to the sheriff's office here uh, and my colleagues who've helped me uh, get this bill to this point, and I'd like to renew my motion to approve. Thank you. Motion to approve is properly seconded. There is a request for abstention. Madam Clerk, will you open the machine? Madam Clerk. I have 36 for, none against, one abstention. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, Councilor Gilmore. Briefly. There you go. All right, thank you. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I just wanted to take the opportunity to thank all the council members uh, as well as the vice mayor, as well as the executive branch of government for participating in the Go Red. Go Red is something that we um, celebrate in the city. It's with uh, the American Heart Association and just to bring awareness to women to have a healthy heart. It usually happens on Friday, February the 6th. But of course, the council meets on the first and third Tuesday, so we are recognizing it as a body. So I just want to take, thank everyone uh, for wearing red, whether it was a pin, a scarf, a bow tie, a tie, a sweater. I appreciate you and I want them to know the American Heart Association that the Metropolitan City Council definitely supports women going red. Thank you. Is there a motion to adjourn? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. This has been a service of the Metro National Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.